that's it. Lost our opportunity. It's all over. Yep. That's it. We're it. done. It's over. It shouldn't be over. Um, yeah, but anyway, for those who are watching, welcome. This is the Andres Restart Podcast. We do it every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. This time we're going into our impressions for Animal Crossing New Horizons, what we're thinking of the game, how we're sort of enjoying it and figuring it all out. And then also going to be talking about our assumedly final <laughs> predictions for right. this potential Hopefully. March Nintendo Direct. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. Or else it'll be bad. But I think it's going to be yeah. fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's going to be fine, though. I think everything's going to work out. Um, and it's going to be a good time. For sure. So, this we're gonna, we're gonna, and we're gonna talk a few other things like for like GameStop. Apparently, uh, they mm. said they weren't gonna shut down because they were lifely essential. Yeah, they they were essential industry or something. I forget essential yeah. something until today. <laughs> yeah, like three days later, like no, actually, well, we're shutting down. Um, so so we're, actually, we're not above the law, so um, we're shut. Yeah. Um. And also, well, I had a, oh yeah, my notes are here. Um, we'll talk a little bit about actual b direct rumors that will help to shape our predictions, I suppose. And then we're, we're also going to be talking about apparently Nintendo taking down some Dreams content, how we sort of feel about this. So this is this oh, PS4 yeah. game, Dreams, where people sort of make their own like levels and games. And a lot mm -hmm. of it has been sort of Nintendo-centric, and Nintendo has said, hey, don't do that, please. And there's a bit of, uh, you know, a bit of conversation to be had there for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be going into. Um, I am a little concerned about the notification system on YouTube right now because I don't see people yeah. watching. So I, I, don't... I, I, it still won't show up in my sub feed, but yeah. it did give me a notification. So I got through, that's where I got to it. I yeah. got through to the notification. Strange. Um, so very strange. What's funny is that I had a couple Look comments... Like before the podcast even went live, like, like before you put the name on it. So I'm not, I don't know what's going on yeah, on the YouTube, YouTube, but for those who make it to the chat, course. we are here. By all means, you know, give us questions, put it in the chat, and we will get to it. I'm just kind of surprised because it really doesn't look like the notification system is working because I don't see anyone there. It's kind of unusual. But, um, you know, we're, we're still going to talk about these things. Um,. But, you know, I guess before we jump into the swing of things here, Brandon, how you doing, buddy? What, what's new with you? I mean, uh, you know, coronavirus is getting more and more serious. That's been more and more affected. My hours at work have been kind of crazy. Next week, some days I'm scheduled to work like five hours. And then like next day I'm working 10 hours. It's really weird. And having to like make sure everybody gets hours, just having to shut in the you know the inside parts got shut down. So it's just drive through. Yeah, it's just a drive through. So people who worked like from counter and stuff, they don't they don't have they got to be be be, be repurposed. Mm. Um, so right. everybody's hours are all kinds of off. And like today, I was supposed to work from seven to four, um, but they let me go early at uh, twelve thirty to one somewhere around there. Um, and next Sunday, I'm supposed to work 6 a.m. to 4 p.m., which is 10 hours, so that's lovely. Um, but I don't even know if I'll be there the whole time, so it's really weird. Uh, but yeah, the virus is uh, starting to affect things, less things in stores, you know. Oh, man, that just that just sounds like a pain. I don't... Yeah, it's pain in the ass. Yeah. <sighs> Scheduling's all kinds of crazy. Yeah, I'm kind of right there with you, but I'm not sure what's going on. Um, that, I mean, for you, that just sounds annoying. Mm. Yeah, definitely, it sounds annoying. I mean, like, shouldn't you have, like, less... You'd think it would be scaled down. I mean, I guess if you're being let out early, mm -hmm. it kind of is being scaled down. Yeah, I, I am getting an extra day off every week now, which yeah. sucks. I mean, it's good now. I guess I can play Animal Crossing more. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of need the money, especially since I'm moving out mm. um, soon. Well, You're moving like, out? What? Yeah, 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 what yeah. is this huge news? Like, it is just start oh, just dropping live. You. All right, no. I didn't tell you. Oh no. man, I thought I told you. I must no. have told one of my other friends. Your other Andres friend. Yes, they are their Andres. I know. I know so I'm many. I'm gonna of them kill them. Just... I don't like this. There's only <laughs> can only be one. 
Yeah, but uh, that's yeah, not actually, uh, that's my parents okay. are moving. Um, April sixth, I think the house closes, and we're moving. But they're moving like real far, mm. and I don't really want to move with them. So I'm gonna move with my older brother. We're gonna live in our own place. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. That that is that is that is exciting, man. Um, mm-hmm. big steps for you for sure. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff for it's me. Just sucks I mean, because like I can't. I I want to get my driver's license so I can drive around. You don't need that. Just walk. Yeah, but I won't just be like as close to my job as I you am now. Just, what is it? Five miles. <laughs> just. You can walk that. It's fine. You can walk that. Yeah, yeah, you, you'll life. be fine. Yeah. You're good. Don't worry yeah, about it. Real early. Yeah, but I can't get my driver's license because all the government buildings are. Not- oh, right now, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna yeah. have to take a little while for awesome. sure. I do see that the chat is starting to trickle in now. It did seem like the <laughs> notifications were a little slow. I don't know yeah. why, but there are some people in the chat now. Uh, I saw that Almighty Almighty Savage Animator and Control Alt Dan were in here early hyping things up. But yeah. now here watching, watching that's a new word, <laughs> watching, Isaiah Negus, Troy, Podcast Dojo, Vooper, how you guys doing? Welcome one and all. Cold outsider right now though, hello, he's saying congrats to you. <laughs> yeah. He's telling me to just we're, walk. We're both That's well. what I do now. <laughs> yeah, so, fun fact, I'm doing well, I am healthy, but, so... I did my official Nintendo Direct predictions and published on Friday, mm-hmm. right? So I recorded that. It took me a little while to record that, right? Um, then even longer to edit it because it was like it was like right. 40 minutes of recording, and that was the final oh, good wow. take. I couldn't even breathe, so it took me like two hours of recording. Um, and then eventually I had like a good 40-minute thing, and uh, mm-hmm. so someone came to the house and I had to step up, stand up. Anyway, you know, like recording... It, something it's like a 10 minute recording could sometimes be hours of work sometimes it isn't sometimes it is it, it depends but i couldn't breathe because the night before mm. i had an allergic reaction uh because i had shrimp i'm allergic to shrimp uh, uh i thought i could get away with eating it without touching my face because apparently it only happens when i touch my face maybe i touched my face accidentally like this is the I same just... thing you said last time <laughs> They may very well be the case. <laughs> it's the exact Maybe. same words. I thought uh, if I just didn't touch my face. Like, right. Just... I don't think I did touch my face, though. That's the thing. It's yeah. possible I might have, like, just did this just to, like, you know, pull my hair out once subconsciously. Mm-hmm. And that might have all, yeah. all, it, all it needed. It didn't get me that bad because after, you know, I, I took some uh, anti whatever like some some allergy pills like a lever yeah something and i mean it looked it looked terrible for that night but after that it it pretty much i pretty much looked fine the the morning after which is when i recorded but i know i like my lips were like gray like my if you watch the recording if you watch the video you'll notice my lips are a little gray i should have put on chapstick and but like you couldn't tell that my eyes like flamed up like in the video not really uh so i mean i still did it it was fine but it was a challenge um, yeah, that sounds rough. But anyway, if anyone saw that I looked a little under the weather, it was just because I had allergies the night before, not because I was I'm sick. I'm fine. I feel p- perfect. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, you know, stuff's going on. We've talked about that already. We don't need to really harp on that. I mean, granted, right. some of the issues or, or topics we're talking about throughout the podcast are related to that. For example, the GameStop situation. We're going to talk about that when we get into our predictions. We that we that may somehow affect the, the, the direct so we're gonna, we're gonna bring that up but we're not gonna really focus on that that is affecting mm-hmm. a lot of people right now because it, it's a constant thing so that's not what we're focusing on not to mention oh we'll get demonetized not that that really matters because it's not my full-time job anyway uh for now uh but yeah so um where should we get started let's uh let's talk about the, the, the quick things first and then we'll, we'll jump into the more interesting stuff so the quick okay. things nintendo taking down dreams content how do you feel about that, Brandon? I think it's... I, I understand why. I just think it's dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you want to protect your property and all of that. And I totally understand when people are making, like, copycats of your games or, like, sequels. And, like, you, you see those, like, people online that are making games that are obvious, like, Nintendo IPs. And then they, get, you know, they get dmca which... That makes sense. Um, that I understand because those are products that are like played just like your games. 
they look just like your games they have the same name as your games same characters so people can kind of play those and they're a lot like <clears throat> excuse me not like your games dreams is not like that like you can make like legit games and dreams but none of the as far none of the things i've seen play to anywhere near the quality of an actual nintendo game you know it's just, it's just like this little bite size like mini game essentially and they yeah they use the ips but it's not like they're selling them and it's not like people are going to play that instead of the next mario game or anything like that like i kind of understand it just because you know it's weird seeing nintendo ip on playstation technically they do it's own it so they have the rights but I think it's dumb and anti-consumer and just needless. Like, there's no no need to tell them to take this uh, stuff down. It's not impacting you at all. I, I, not sure where I stand on this <clears throat> issue. Um, on the one hand, I understand what you're saying. Like, it doesn't seem like it might hurt Nintendo monetarily, right? So mm -hmm. why stop it? But I've I, they also want to protect their IP, their intellectual property, and mm -hmm. for we look at it as hardcore gamers and it doesn't yeah we understand what it is and it's not really a big deal but perhaps from a more casual perspective someone might think oh look they got the mario on there we don't need the switch right like that and i'm not saying that's it that is for sure that's maybe perhaps a a big part of the market but it might be a little bit right um yeah maybe. i don't have the access to the numbers or the research on that but it might be for the casual, right? From our perspective, it seems like a, like a ridiculous notion to think, but that it could somehow replace that. But you know, like the common phrase, the phrase or figure of speech that like, like mommy says, oh, but we already have that at home, Johnny oh, yeah. or something, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> that, like that, meme. that is a thing though for a reason, because that happens all the time with families, right? Like I, so I could, I could see why Nintendo might be like, hey, if they just if they just like to go by the book, by these things, they see it's gaining a lot of popularity. Mm -hmm. They don't like the usage of it, especially on a competitive system, right? Like if someone has a PS4 right. and they want the Nintendo stuff, but if they feel like they can kind of get a little bit of that Nintendo esqueness with their dreams content, they're only on their PS4. Maybe they won't feel like they really need to make the jump. So I'm just saying that I think a legitimate argument could be made that that maybe Nintendo could lose out on some potential sales there. Right now, I'm not, I don't know if it's anything significant. I really don't. But I'm just mm -hmm. kind of looking at it from both sides of the table. Right on one side, maybe Nintendo really does have a legitimate claim to say, "Hey, this is going to affect the sales potential sales for us, so we have every right to take it down." And they do have every right, right. legally yeah. to take yeah, it down. They do have every right. right, but it's just kind of more of is it is it an ethical thing, right? Because mm -hmm. on, on the other hand. People are enjoying this content. It's really cool to see it and to see people like do different things with these levels in a more, I guess, mainstream kind of way, right? Which is cool mm -hmm. and it's free. So, well, you have to have a, a, a PS4 and Dreams, right? But, you know. Right. Um, so, I, I, I can, if it's not really hurting anyone, then why, why stop it? But maybe it is hurting someone. Maybe it is hurting Nintendo. And that's, that's just kind of like the, the argument to be made. Nintendo feels it is, so they're making that claim. I, at the end of the day, it's not a big deal for me, right? Because no, whatever. Not a big deal. But I, just, I just, I just kind of see two sides to the argument. I can't really make a decision on it. I'm not a part of the Nintendo legal team, so I don't have to. So you know, oh, hi. Uh, yeah. Um, it's interesting yeah. though. I mean, that there was some cool stuff uh, that we saw. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the one in particular was like a, a particular like Super Mario level. Right, like I haven't seen everything on Dreams. I haven't played Dreams myself or worked with it, but I've right. seen some videos of it. And it looks really cool. Uh, so, oh well. Yeah, well, let's see what the, what the chat here thinks of that. Vooper saying, not ready to go back to the real world tomorrow. I want to stay on my island. Actually, yeah, we should start talking about Animal Crossing soon. That is going to be a big part of the podcast, guys. Because oh, yeah. this game's actually pretty great. <laughs> Cold Outsider right now, though, just said, I'm time, I am time travel in Animal Crossing. Sue me. Well, Nintendo How might. How dare you? No, they won't. Yeah. <laughs> they won't. Control Dan is also allergic to shrimp. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm allergic to shrimp, apparently. I don't think I always have been. And it's weird because, like, I think, like, I can have sushi and crab and, I, like, if I, I can go to a Chinese buffet and I eat everything and be fine, I might be a little right. cautious about touching my face. 
Um, and maybe it really just did, did just touch my face, and I could still eat shrimp. Uh, but at the end of the day, like shrimp is great, but there's, I, I, if I never had shrimp again in my life, I'll be fine. So you know, there's everything. I eat everything. Like I don't, like the only reason I won't eat shrimp is just because it'll make me ugly. <laughs> like otherwise, I would still eat it because it tastes good. Who gave uh, me the ugly? <laughs> exactly. But otherwise, I'd be fine. One of the most delicious food is shrimp. Well, well, it's Ray, okay. yeah, you rub it in. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Cold outside right now. They're saying, "Wow, Nintendo took down Dreams content. That's so dumb." Something like this, something like this will go to the Supreme Court one day. I don't know about that. Maybe not the Supreme Court, but I mean, there are court cases along those lines all the time. James saying, "Well, it, it did have Mario in it. That's true." So. Podcast Dojo thinks it's silly, but understands it. Cold Outsider right now is saying, Nintendo has to prove damages to sue. That would be so hard to do. I would fight them in court if I was Sony. Hmm. Mm. Well, right now they're not suing, and Sony completely agreed to take it down. So Right, they, they just say, hey, problem. take it down, and then they did. They complied. So it's not going to become an issue as long as they comply. So... I mean, I don't, I don't anticipate on it becoming a bigger issue than this. If it does, oh well. Uh, but you know, if you can avoid a court case, then that's fine. On top of that, you know, if you think think of it from this perspective, Sony's probably like, "Ha ha! Now the fanboys are going to attack Nintendo and support us. We're gonna look good." So <laughs> yeah. you can make that argument that in a way that sort of benefits Sony because they they look good right now on social media, and I'd say they do. In this, in, um, from this angle, they look good, and a lot of people are hating on Nintendo for this. But it's just kind of saying that Nintendo's always been done, always done. They've always been protective of their IP, their intellectual property. Yeah. They really value that because it is how, sort of what separates them from the rest of the competition. Their intellectual property and how they innovate with their games, that is something very special. That's something they're trying to push more so with the amiibo, with merchandising, with the parks, with the with the movies in the future. All of that's going to help to propel Nintendo. And I know that they want to push. For example, Mario to the height of something like Mickey Mouse. They, that's their goal. I think that's a great goal. Will they ever get there? I mean, they're going to have to really push some serious boundaries. But point is, they use that IP to boost them, to make them unique, to get stronger. So they are very protective of it. So I understand why they have those policies. It is part of the reason why they've been so successful. Because they protect their IPs and their IPs I allow them to succeed. Right? When you think of it in that mm -hmm. way. Um, could they be more loose with it? Maybe. But yeah. I'm not on the legal team, so I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. But let's let's move on, because I, I know we, we I really want to get to the to the bigger topics here. Mm. But I want I want your thoughts on this whole GameStop shut down, not shut down. Like at first they were like, hey, we mm. are essential. We have certain accessories that people need that aren't really like it's not the main reason you would go to a GameStop anyway. And if yeah. Like, I think they said they had, like, He's earphones and Steve and, and, and stuff oh. like that, right? Like, man, battery packs and things like that. And they were like, oh, people are going to need this, these things. And that was, like, their or their claim to being essential. And apparently mm -hmm. it worked for a few days, but just recently they announced that they are shutting down. Yeah. I mean, circumstances are getting worse, right? So it may have been that they did initially plan to stay open for at least a little bit longer. But once things got worse, as they have, they shut down. Mm -hmm. But regardless, I personally think that the premise of saying that your life is essential when you aren't, a little ridiculous. However, I also yeah. understand that GameStop needs to do everything they can to make money and profit because they are, I mean, they've been trending downwards for years at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So if they have to go through a significant amount of time of being shut down, that could kill them. Uh, so that That's could be true. the final nail in the coffin. So them doing everything they can to stay open as long as possible, I sort of get it. But at the same time, they aren't essential, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. they, they they aren't. I'm I'm pretty sure the only thing they wanted to do was to make sure that they hit the Animal Crossing and do maternal uh, release dates. That's just all they wanted. They were like, stay open till then. Maybe a day yeah. or two later. So we yeah. can get those after sales of people who couldn't come day one. Then we will be fine. Yeah. We will make it. Um, because those are like the two biggest launches. Nah, that I mean, that's know. true. They did They did get through that, through this weekend, 
right? And now it's over. Now they're shut down. Yeah, they're just and, like, bam. Okay. I mean, I also understand, like, you know, if people are going to be shut in, they're going to want to buy games and systems. So it probably is going to be a little bit harder to do that. Um, mm -hmm. I know there are, I mean, there are technically some stores you could still get it, right? Like, I'm pretty sure Walmart, Walmart and Target would be open, so you could still buy You games can buy at those it from stores. Best Buy. Although, I did get an email today that Best Buy is doing, uh, they're not letting anybody in their stores. They're just bringing things out to people's cars. So wow. if you order it, then they'll just bring it out to your car. Wow. Yeah. I mean, a lot of stores and are going to be sort of changing to, things. You, you can you can also just, like, call up and then ask them to go get something. They'll go inside to see if it's in stock and bring it out to you. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you could buy uh, games there, accessories there, consoles there. Walmart's open. So. Hmm. Yeah, it, it's, um... That's where I bought Animal Crossing, because it's 50 bucks. Very useful. I got my Animal Crossing for 10 bucks, because I got it digitally. What? And I had an Amazon had... gift oh, card. Okay, gotcha. So I used the Amazon gift card to get $50 <clears throat> in eShop points. Well, and then go. I used those eShop points, and all I had left was to pay for 10 bucks to have Animal Crossing digitally. And I have a 400 nice. gigabyte SD card, so I have no qualms with downloading big giant games on my Switch. It's I fantastic. I have a 32 gigabyte SD card because I'm still too cheap to buy a new one. Well, I didn't buy mine, so I'm good. There you go. It was given to me. Yeah. Boom. Um, before I had a 128, so. But I, that, I was right. reaching the limits of that, so I needed to get something a little mm. bit bigger. I buy most of my games physically, so it's, I don't uh, use too much space. Gotta be frank with you, I just find digital way more convenient. Especially now, like, I didn't want I to do bother too, going outside. But and, yeah. My thing about digital is if I buy it physically, not only can I get it $10 cheaper, but I can sell it back if I want, and I can make so much money. Like, imagine all those digital games you have, and you, they're just stuck there. But if I wanted, I got, like, all these games. And the Switch games hold their value so well, I can sell them for a ton. So it's just it's saving you money. Because yeah. at the end of the console's lifespan, there's going to be games where I'm like, I've beaten this, I don't want to play this again. And if I do, I'll just buy it back. So you sell that, help you get the Switch Pro, the Switch 2, the whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, but I, already... I do agree that it's like super convenient for uh, digital. Yes, yes, it is. But since we're already talking about Animal Crossing, let's just jump into Animal Crossing. Yeah. So, and then after, once we're done with talking to Animal Crossing, then we will transition into talking about our direct predictions and the direct rumors surrounding it, right? But hint, hint, <laughs> there are some rumors talking about both Metroid and Zelda at the direct, and we'll get into that Ooh. later in the discussion. But first, let's talk about Animal Crossing. So. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a game that I have now, and I yes. had my reservations about it because I had only had one other Animal Crossing beforehand, and it was years ago, and I stopped playing it because the game wanted me to play it every day, and eventually I came back to it after forgetting about it for weeks, and there was weeds everywhere, and I never went back. But I'm playing this one, and I'm really liking it. I'm enjoying it. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not the normal kind of game I would enjoy. It's not to say I haven't played any other Life Sims before. I have played Animal right. Crossing before, as I just said. I've played Sims a little bit. I've played Stardew Valley. And those games are all fun. Um, but my thing about them is that it's a life simulation to an extent. Animal Crossing sort of, sort of is a more quirkier version of it. But it is sort of like a life yeah. simulation. And when I play these life simulators... For me, it becomes an existential crisis, right? <laughs> because uh, you have you have debt and houses and things to build and people mm -hmm. to interact with and and chores basically. And as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, these are things I could be doing in real life to some extent, and I'm not, or I will have to. Uh, and it sort of messes with my mind a little bit. Um, so I've had that issue before, mm -hmm. but. I'll say that with Animal Crossing, at to this point, all it to me it feels like is a game, and there, it's just kind of fun to sort of build things up. And I'm working on my island, 
and I'm slowly building it up. You know, I already have a little bit of a house. Um, I finally got past the lakes, the rivers, and so I'm sort of expanding upon those. I finally, I, the museum's already built. They're gonna, well, they're gonna build a museum. I, I donate all the animals mm-hmm. necessary to Blathers, Hathers? Bla- Blathers. Ow, Blathers, right? Um, so I, I, like, I got the tent in today. Now, tomorrow, hopefully they'll start building the museum. Right. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm progressing in the game. I feel like I probably put in at least five or six hours at, at this point, at least. Nice. Um, and it's it's good time. I'm enjoying it. I, I really like the game. I don't know how much longer I'm going to play it for, but at this point, you know, I, I have a vision. I want to 100% the museum. I want to have the biggest house possible. I want to unlock the terraforming mechanic so I can, like, really just... Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do with the island, but there's something I'm going to do with it, and we'll find out. Right. And it's, it's cool, man. I'm, I'm enjoying the game so far. Yeah. I think my favorite thing about this game compared to like new leaf is just how much more interactive the world is how much more it feels like you have to explore the world and how much more there is just to do because an animal in in new leaf is very much just like this is where you are you know everything it's very small and there wasn't many anywhere to go or explore because everything was kind of bear already known to you and it's you know very very small areas um but this one is just kind of like oh yeah there's just the entire areas of the island i don't even i can't even get over to there because either it's over a river or it's up above me and i can't get there and there's just like these places and you're just like i i haven't even been to like half my island and i've been playing for hours like that was not how it was in the other animal crossing games and then, of course, you got the other islands that you can go to, and then they're all, like, randomly generated. Yeah, that's cool. Every single time you I, go, I did one island awesome. already, like that. Yeah. I was able to so get coconuts. I planted a whole bunch of coconut Same. trees. What was, what was your uh, fruit? Orange. Orange. Mine was pear. I don't know why, but people say pear is, like, the worst. I don't actually know why. I mean, I don't, I don't eat pears. <laughs> pears are, like, apples, but not as good. Really? Yeah. yeah. I realized that earlier in the podcast, I said I eat everything. I don't eat pears. Like, if you give me a plate of pears, go. I will try it. So, like, in that regard, They're I still right. eat them. But I, Not if I had bad. to choose between apples and pears, I'm always going to go oh, with apples. an apple. 100%. Um, yeah. So, you know. But, yeah. Uh, I got oranges. And I, I want to get more fruit. But I heard coconuts are very valuable for sales. I didn't, I didn't know that. But I, I got four from the island. I'm going to play with them. It's going to be great. But, um, yeah, I, I like how much this game just completely does not hold your hand in any way, shape, or form. It's just like, yeah, there's an island. Uh, you're you're the mayor or the island representative now. And, uh, okay, have fun. It's like, what? <laughs> like, if I didn't know what, like, what to do, or if I'd never played a life simulation game or, like, Animal Crossing before, I'd be like, um... Excuse me? It's funny. I never really thought of it like that because I, I guess I already knew what to do. It's like, all right, I'm going to yeah. pay off my debts and get bigger ho- a bigger house and decorate it and explore stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was it. They don't tell you how to get the museum. Like, you don't have the museum. You don't have anything. You, you have basically nothing, which is completely opposite to, like, New Leaf. You had... You didn't have every shop, but you had most of them, and they weren't fully upgraded, but they were at least there. Um, and you knew exactly where they were and how to get to them and unlocking them was pretty straight or unlocking the upgrades and stuff was pretty straightforward this one is just like uh, what no idea how anything works no idea how to get shops no idea to get the museum no idea how to do anything no idea how to even like they, they just like they teach you a lot just by giving you stuff you know they don't know they don't, there's not like menus and menus and just like dialogue after dialogue about them having to like teach you the mechanics you know like when you start like an mmo up and it's got like the screens and screens and screens of like no this game doesn't have that it's just like yeah okay um here's something pick it up oh what is this oh it's a diy recipe oh i have the diy app oh and you know all this kind of stuff so it's it teaches you very much by giving what you need and then giving a light explanation of what it does and then just letting you go Go for it. Like, they don't even tell you, like, hey, pick up this. It's just like, oh, I see something on the ground. Oh, I picked it up. Oh, it was a DIY recipe. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know those were even a thing, you know? It's just that kind of, like, 
this pure exploration to progression that I think is really cool. Hmm. Yeah. I see what you mean. Um I guess I just it just never dawned on me that it just it's not holding my hand. I but I mean I'll say I've had my fair bit of challenge because I've been sung several times already. <laughs> Dude, and I'm like, sense. holy crap, I dropped another honeycomb run and it doesn't work. So my next strategy is to try and catch them before they sting me. I don't know if it's possible yet, but if I know it is, in New Leaf it's possible, it's really hard. You can also go inside. No, there's no you can't. There's no way. You, you can. cannot run fast you have enough. To hit. I have. You it depends on where you are. And dude, no. if you're over one of the rivers, you're just done. It's over. No. You're, you're gonna get stuck. Just, but they... if you're on like the main part of the island, you could probably. No. Not me. <laughs> no, not, not me, man. They, they, they got me good. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Like, <laughs> like one time, like, you know, oh, you know, me... you know how to run, right? What? Just hold, hold B to run, right? You know. That. Really? I really didn't know that. Oh my. Yeah, I, you, I can you run. run. Yeah, if you hold down B, you run. Holy crap. This game doesn't hold my hand because it never told me how to run. No, it's so it I can run. Anything. Oh, I can run! Huh! Yeah. B's, you're screwed because now I can get away. Yep. Oh, I did not know that. Wow. There you go. I wonder how long it would have taken me to figure that out. Um, that's a good question. Wow. Okay. Now Damn. I know what to, I know what to run now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah. So let me check in with the chat here. Let me see. If Podcast Dojo was saying I want to buy indie games digital. JM is saying dig digital is way more now is net is now way more convenient. Cold outsider right now is saying physical is the best way to go, but it's an extra step to leave your house. I get what you guys are saying, but in reference to Animal yeah. Crossing, he was saying, never played Animal Crossing till now. It's very good and high quality. Great graphics with small details, even has a physics engine. The tech and quality is very similar to Breath of the Wild. Oh, that is some high claims. But I, I do get the, I do feel like all the mechanics in mm -hmm. Animal Crossing, it does feel very sound. Um, yeah. And it does seem like, like, there's a, a lot of little things. I'm like, oh, you can do that? That's cool. Oh, you can do that? That's cool. Like how sometimes, like, when you're moving furniture in your house and you have it so, like, there's barely any space between one or the other, right? You can, like, sidestep through them, which yes, I think is neat. you couldn't do that before. Yeah. And I, I did that and I was like, what? Yeah, that 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 is pretty cool. Um, I'm very so excited funny. to see how the game's going to be once I unlock terraforming. Because, I mean, yeah. that, at that point, it's going to change everything. I still don't even have the ladder yet, but I at least Me now either. have the vaulting pole so I can yeah. get to the second half. Like, there's, I guess, the island's sort of divided in three different segments, right? Like, there's the base, then there's the part past the river, and then there's the elevated part that you need something else. Like, you mm -hmm. need, so you, first you need to get the vaulting poles to get past the river, then you need to get the ladder to get to the higher elevated parts of of the land of the island yeah and then i assume after that you then unlock terraforming i, I don't know how, how much further in you have to go but i'm mm -hmm. assuming that's sort of like the sequence of like i guess plat I, I know mechanics. you unlock you unlock like bridges and um like stairs that you can put in but i don't okay. know if you need the terraforming for that i don't think you do i think that's um different from the terraform well, I, I, I don't mean like. Time. I don't know. I no, I'm I'm pretty sure that you get the ladder before, before terraforming. I'm not saying no, no, that. No, 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 no. I, I meant like built in, like like you can build bridges before like terraforming. I I think that that's what it would seem like to me, but I I don't know. Uh, well, you may be I'm right. I'm just guessing. Yeah. I, I know that those are in the game. I just don't know when you get right. them relative to terraforming. Right. I have no, I have no idea. I assumed it was all all together, but maybe not. Uh, I don't know. No idea. We're not there yet. So I, mo most of my villagers still have tents. I have a little house, though. I've already upgraded from a tent. Yeah, I have a house. JM saying I got the museum, the house, and just upgrade. He upgraded his house twice, twice yes. in one day, and he upgraded the shop. So I, I need to upgrade the shop. Ha! You did? Yes. And I got two new villagers because I went to two different islands. 
Oh, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. One of them's a cool octopus dude. Things named Zucker. Oh, Zucker. I got like a He's green awesome. gorilla. Also got a pink. Uh, Bear. These are the ones I got. No, kangaroo. These are ones I got after. These aren't the my base. Um, my base animals were a frog named Drifter and a I think it's uh, some kind of bear I think uh, I couldn't really tell I don't know their um, names. name Yammy I don't I know didn't their remember their names till literally just now yeah. earlier I was talking to somebody and I didn't remember the names I just have to remember now so um what was it yeah I'm I, I, I want is there a limit to how many villagers you can get I, I imagine there is <clears throat> yes um, but I don't know what it is. Can I you know... kick villagers out? No. But they can move. They can move. Okay. Yeah. And if I... there's somebody you don't want to move, you can tell them not to move, but that doesn't always work. But if you don't interact with one particular person, move. they will eventually move, right? I mean, they'll eventually move either way. Um, but I guess that might go faster if you don't interact with them. I don't know. Okay. And I, I'm just basing off what new, happened in New Leaf, so and they could have changed. Right, stuff. right, right. I know, I know you can have more villages in New Town than you could in New Leaf. I believe New Leaf's max was like ten. Um, I think this one's like twelve or fourteen or sixteen. I know the highest one was the Wii one, I think, and you could have sixteen. Um, so, so you probably in this one's pretty big uh, island. I'm seeing a bit of debate in, in the chat about time traveling. So, as far as I know, in Animal Crossing New Horizons, if you save your game and exit out of the app, you can go to your Switch, change the date and time, and that date and time will reflect in your game when you enter the game again. I don't know how this, like, I don't know if this can allow you to fast forward to the point where, like, like, if I were, can I basically do like a week of progress in a day? right uh, like, that's how it worked in new leaf you could just change it so like if you needed to wait in your house to be built you could just make it the next day and bam your house is ready um so, so for example if i want my, my museum to be built i can move it ahead like two days and the museum will be built yes well that's if, how it worked in new leaf i'm right, assuming, assuming, works, assuming if, if time assuming. travel works the same way then yeah okay if i want it to be winter you should be able to do that also you could just make it in the southern hemisphere <laughs> And then to be winter right, right yeah but i but i but if i or wanted fall? to change it to winter from where i'm at now yeah yeah you could do that well actually in new leaf you could make it christmas you can't do that in this well, i guess i guess i guess that we're in spring now like a priority jump to spring i was thinking why isn't it winter now it's cold where i'm at <laughs> it's yeah. cold sometimes where i'm at cold yeah ish. not hot yes yeah, colder outside of right now though i did not know there was a sprint button I know I'm an idiot. <laughs> I I am not. Jay didn't know either, so. Well, we're smart, okay? We just didn't know, okay? Ignorance is bliss. Control all, Dan. I am sorry you have yet re to receive your Animal Crossing copy. That was Damn. also one of the reasons why I, I just wanted to get it digital. Like I pre-downloaded it just to make sure I would have it. Uh, and then I heard that Nintendo servers crashed for a little bit, and I was like, oh no! What if their servers are crashed for weeks, and I can't, oh, like, just register that I have, that, that it's time to play the game? Um, but they, that only took a few hours, and they were fine, right. but there was, like, multiple reports, and it, it was weird. I hadn't seen Nintendo servers go down for that long before. Hmm. Um, it's very strange. Quarantining right now, playing Animal Crossing. Yeah. Vooper's saying that you could kick out villagers in New Leaf. Yeah, um, cold, um, cold outside right now, though, uh, explained it better. He says once you get Isabel, you can go play into her about a certain villager. If you can play in three days in a row, the villager will ask if they should leave or not. I Ooh. believe you could do the same thing in, uh, New Leaf, but I actually completely forgot about that. Um, yeah, Vooper was also saying that once Isabel arrives, that can happen. So it seems like Isabel is the Grim Reaper for villagers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just destroys them. I wonder. I, I wonder how long it takes to do that. I don't know. Parker I don't know Owen. How you get Isabel, so. I played New Leaf for months without knowing you could sprint. Oof. See, apparently sprinting is just not saying it's advertised, right? Yeah, yeah. Holding down the beep on the sprint. What a revolution! I mean, I never really. Here's the thing, though. I never felt like I needed to sprint except for the bees. I felt like it was already going at a good pace 
Yeah, he walks pretty. I mean, I guess because the environment in Animal Crossing is so animated, right? Like, there's lots of nice, like, very satisfying sound effects, and you always see, yeah. like, the, the, the sound background quality, very animated. Like, the quality yeah. of the sounds themselves are really hot. They sound it's so kind of like in that res- in that res- uh, sense it is a lot like breath of the wild because moving about in breath of the wild is just fun like the because th- you can sort of feel yourself interact with the environment in various ways and there's a lot of ambient noise and things of that nature so mm-hmm. it feels a lot more alive right uh and i think animal crossing is a very a little bit similar to that in fact i wouldn't if i'm not mistaken i do believe that some of the Animal Crossing composers worked on Breath of the Wild. That I believe that's the case. Sounds correct. I'm pretty sure it is. No, I'm like pretty I'm like sure 100% right. certain that a lot of the core people who worked on the anim- some people who had worked on the Animal Crossing uh, sound effects beforehand worked on Breath of the Wild. Let me see if I can pull up that. I, I, I spelled wayoed instead of wild. <laughs> Blooper hmm. says you're correct. Yeah, it was in it was in an interview at some point. Um, I mean, we were talking about how it makes sense. I me- I remember now. We were talking about how that made sense back before, back when that first came out that they were doing that. Yeah, I'm just trying to find an interview on it. It might have been the that three-part Zelda series that came out after Breath of the Wild. Like, oh yeah, the video yeah. series. This is called the making of Breath yeah. of the Wild or something. Control F. Will that bring up what I'm trying to look for? Hmm. No. Well, people agree. <laughs> this, we'll, we'll, we'll find another time, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Um, where was I? Yeah, but anyway, it does, uh, you know, I think that sort of plays a role into like just enjoying like walking through the island right because of it's so yeah. uh, of the sound effects and how interactive and animated the world is and for those reasons i feel that i never felt like i needed to just rush through very quickly so i was never like huh i'm not going fast enough get me out of here mm-hmm. i just enjoyed going at the trotting pace that is the default speed but now that i know i can run oh it's a whole different ball game now <laughs> you honeybees i'm gonna get you uh, or just escape. Yeah. Where am I? Where is it? Where is the... Because I, I lost my... Oh, there we go. Now that's up. Okay. So where were we? I have not seen aliens yet. I didn't know there were aliens. <laughs> yes. Um, apparently there were some aliens in previous... Animal Crossing games. I have yet to experience that myself. I remember this. Yeah. I have seen some shooting stars, though, which is interesting. But, yeah, I have not actually seen aliens yet, but I've just started playing the game. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff. I did run into... Is his name Gulliver? Yes. I've run into Gulliver, and I've already figured out how to find all the... Um... The components. Yeah, there's like a name for like connector parts or something. Communicator. Com- communicator parts. Yeah, I figured it out. Um, like basically on the beach, you'll see like these little sprouts of water come out of the shore. When you shovel at those parts, sometimes you'll just get like a little shell thing or something. But other times you get the clams. communicator parts. Yeah, the clams. Uh, yeah. But you can also get the communicator parts when you're looking for it. When you're on that little side quest for Gulliver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I noticed that that seems to ha- be how it works. Yeah, I, I noticed completely by mistake because I was just digging at random spots and then I happened to dig where a clam had just been shooting the water out. And I was like, oh, it's a park. And then I talked to Gulliver and he's like, yeah. And he, he said something that was an obvious hint to uh, try that, but I forget what it was. Oh, really? I didn't even yeah. bother to do that. I just 
went looking. I I have a whole like I had beaches a hole, so I was like, huh, there's got to be an easier way to do this. I was just worried about my shovel breaking, so I was like, never well, my shovel never broke, but I already have the, the I good think it parts. Breaks. I, oh yeah, I think it breaks if you hit it against the flimsy one. Break. Oh, I have a question for you. I think digging holes is not actually take. I, I have a question for you, and I want—I don't know if you know the answer to this, but when you break a rock on your island, is it gone forever? No. Rocks grow back. What do you? Oh, yeah, a broken rock. So one of the rocks break. So a new leaf. This was just normal. So some of the rocks would break, and then other rocks would. Uh, you'd hit them, and you know it give you stuff. Yeah. So the rocks that broke were just um, rocks that would change locations every every day. Okay, so if a rock breaks, it won't <clears> be. It won't be right there, but, but it will, there will be another rock the next. So day. there's still the same Somewhere. amount of rocks in the island. Yes. Okay. Always. Okay. All right. Good. I was worried because I ate an orange and I just wrecked that thing, and I was like, oh, I wish I didn't eat that orange. <laughs> there's no benefit <laughs> to eating the orange. Maybe too strong. Okay, I'm glad that rocks spawn, so I don't have to be worried about that. I don't. I, mm. I, I know I could just go to other islands, but it'd be weird to just get rid of all the rocks and have nothing. Like. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, it would. Did you upgrade the shop? Did I'm I'm about to. I need to I need to get some um, what's that? I got all the wood. There's one more thing I need. You need the, the iron. The nuggets. Iron nuggets. Yes. Yeah. Those. So I got I gotta go to some other islands okay. and harvest them. Yeah. Is there a limit right. to the other islands you can go to? Do you have to pay for that or anything? I only did it once. You have to do. You have to pay two thousand nook miles per ticket. So per travel, it's two. So your first one is free, and then free. after that, two thousand miles 2, is ridiculous. You get them faster than no. you. No. No, 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 no. I, do. I, do. No, 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 I no. got two of them, like, really quick. No, I that just, is... Re I don't want to have to I waste... I saved up for 5,000. Have you gotten the uh, storage upgrade for your, like, your walking around storage? No. Yeah, well, how do I get miles. that? Because I need that. Okay, have you not done, like, the terminal where you can I, deposit I, yeah, money Yeah, is, it, is this one of them allows you to expand your inventory? I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 5,000. I need that, because I'm constantly like, oh, well, i got to leave all my insects and fishes here. It gives you a whole other row. Actually, I think it gives you more than just one row. I, I need space, more space. I, I know at least it gives you one row. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um... Oh, did well, you know you have storage at your house, right? Yeah. Built in I, that house. part I, I did know. So I did I think it tells there. That when you go. Yeah. Uh, for sure, Z's. So... Um, I mean, I'm really enjoying the game. I think it's gonna be fun. Do you think we're gonna get any sort of like paid DLC options down the line, or is it gonna be more of like a Splatoon thing where we just get like little updates here and there? Well, I know they're doing the updates thing at least for the holidays because they don't want people to try and travel to them mm. um, and spoil the uh, new sense. holiday events. Um, as far as other DLC, I think they might go the path that they did with New Leaf and just release like a whole expansion. Just, you know, a couple years after the game comes out. What would they be able to do? I mean, I, I still, I'm still learning about the game now, so I right. guess I can't really... Yeah, uh, I, I I have to play more of the game to, to really oh, think about Oh, I know what they like, can New do. Was I figured it out, field, Brandon. So. No, I got it. I figured it out. You ready? You ready? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know how I've had this idea to sort of reinvigorate the Animal Crossing series for, uh -huh. he, for quite some time now. And yes, if yes. anyone says I stole this idea from Andre Seegers, no, he stole the idea from me, okay? It's I was, true. The other day I saw him first. bring it up, and I was like, what the hell? I've been talking about this for two years. Yeah. And he has so half, almost ha all, almost my whole first name. What the flip, man? <laughs> um, Yeah, no, so basically my idea is that there should be like a homicide department added to Animal Crossing. And you should be a detective for tra for trying to figure out who murdered who. Yeah, come on, it'd be so cool. Think about it, dude. If a villager mysteriously disappears and you're like, what happened? And one of the villagers in your island is the culprit. You gotta figure it out, right? You have like 10 villagers and you're like, who is it? Who did it? Can I trust you? Can I trust, like, what's going on? And maybe it's not actual murder, right? Maybe it's kind of more like, Somebody stole candy. 
or something. Yeah, you could chibi it up a little, but because I guess they wouldn't want actual murder in Animal Crossing. But you know, no, like surprising. Wouldn't surprise you. Yeah, but he's already dead. He died before Animal Crossing. Ooh. He didn't. I said it would. I said it would completely go with it. I don't know who you're talking about. What? What are we talking? about? I didn't about? say it. I don't know. I didn't say a name. And then oh. you said they no, died. No, because because they showed in the direct it like a little ghost, right? Oh, yeah, the, the ghost, ghost. Okay. exactly. That's who you're referring to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that's that's what I thought you were talking about. No. That's not what I was talking. About. Okay. But yeah, yeah, they should do that. That'll be a great DLC. Um, but anyway, I'm loving this game. But I know you guys want to start talking about Nintendo Direct stuff. So I'm ready to move on to that. But if you guys have more questions or points to bring up with Animal Crossing, that's cool too. This game's pretty fun, man. So we're going to be talking about it for a while. I, I mean, uh, is there anything else you want to bring up before we move on, Brandon? Uh, you know, we never talked about what we named our town. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, all right. You ready for mine? Or no, you go first. Mm -hmm. No, mine is better. No, it's worse. Okay, you it kind of depends on perspective, first. to be honest with you. you uh, mine might be just really dumb. Okay. okay. Yeah, mine is dumb. All right, so everyone's been naming their islands like different like Zelda names, like Aventide Island, Koholint, Hyrule, Great Plateau. Well, you want to know what I named my island? What? Not a location. A location? No, it's not like not that. I just mean like it's Tingle Island. Not Tingle Island. That's a good one. I named it nothing Zelda related because I felt like everyone was doing that. Uh, I named it Hubert. Hubert, like, yeah. <laughs> no, just a little baby. Just, just I named it Hubert. Like I just felt Hubert? like Island. Your name is you're a Hubert. You're a Hubert. So here's my thinking. There is very little thinking in it. Yeah, but, I can tell. But I just thought it was funny to name it after like a person, <laughs> and just call it Hubert. And like, I guess I guess what's funny to me about it is that like. All the villagers are like, oh, Hubert's a great name. Oh, wow, Hubert. We oh all God. live in Hubert. We want to support Hubert and make Hubert grow. So it's like this island is like this personality. We are creating and crafting a, a soul for this island mm -hmm. that we are calling Hubert. Hubert wow. is sentient. Hubert is alive and real. Hubert <laughs> is the island and being that I live He's on. He's the island god. The island god, Hubert. Yeah. yeah well, See? It's better than you thought. It, it's, it was definitely interesting. Yeah. Um, it was not what I expected. Not, I didn't no. know what to expect, no. and even so. <laughs> yeah. Hubert. Yeah, it, it grows on you. Yeah. 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 So, uh, mine is in Japanese. Oh, okay. Now, I wanted... Literally, I was just like banging my head against the wall, like what to name it. And then I was like, I, you know what? Just what do I like? And I just started thinking about things I liked. And then I was like, coffee. I like coffee. But I'm not going to name it Coffee Island because that's stupid. Okay. So I was like, okay. So I started translating coffee into different languages. And then I started translating like coffee is love or coffee is life or okay. I love coffee or coffee life and then different languages. And then I found it. I was like, Japanese. It's got to be Japanese, right? Mm. That's just the I was going to do Hawaiian, but none of them were cool. Mm. I, so I was like, Japanese. I love Japanese. You know, games sure. from Japan. So there you go. And so Coffee is Life in Japanese is Kohi, Kohi wa. This is, I'm not pronouncing this right. Jin Sedesu. Kohi wa. Like Desu. Yeah. I, so I was like, that's not, that's hard to, Japanese I was like, that's way too hard to pronounce. Yeah. So I just took the first one, Kohi, and the last part of the last one, Desu, and said my... Kohi Desu? Uh, Ko Kohi Desu. I wonder what that means. It probably means I coffee mean, I think, or something. I think it means coffee is. Just coffee That's is. Better. Coffee, coffee is. Coffee is. The is implies yeah. it is so much. It yeah. is all. Coffee is. I like it. I. Yeah. What is it, it, it was just... I just picked the two easiest parts of the general phrase to pronounce and then stuck them together it's like this is an actually translate but for me it does so yeah uh coffee is life apparently in japanese is sort of the uh 
name. Yeah. I'm seeing here that Control Alt Dan wants to call his island something to do with Metroid. Brinstar Island, Meridia Island, Criteria Island, Torian Island, Norfair Island. None of these have a good sound to them. Uh, yeah. Oh, Vooper is saying that your name, Brandon, would would be would come across as it's coffee. It's coffee. Well, either way, either way, it's works. coffee. It's coffee. It's coffee. You're good. It's coffee. Yeah. Either way, it's coffee. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's that's interesting, man. Um, I like it. I think it's pretty cool. You thought about yours name. You did research for yours. I didn't. I yeah. was just like, I don't know what to call Hubert. this. Yeah. My first thought was something Zelda, but I just didn't want to copy everyone else. So I didn't even. Yeah. I didn't even think about doing something Zelda. Actually, funny story. Um, so obviously you, you go around your town for a little bit before mm. you pick the name, right? Yeah. So I'd been picking weeds like crazy just yeah. because I was like, I'm, I'm here, I'm gonna pick the weeds. And my little young brother, he's like five. He was like, you should just call it Weed Island because there's so many weeds. Right. And I was like, yes, That's Weed Island. I was like, I was just like, yes, picking weeds every day. Oh, I see. I was about to ask um, if anyone thought about any sort of Pokemon names. Uh, but Vooper just went out and said, My island is called Route 32. Hmm. I don't sure know what that means, but. Well. Route 32 is a, I'm pretty sure it's a Pokemon reference. If it's a route, it has to be a Pokemon reference. It can't be it can't be a real life reference. Watch it be real. It's not. It's for sure a Pokemon reference. Cold Outsider right now, though, is saying, I was not expecting to praise this game. It's a sleeper hit for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm really enjoying the, ga the game. It's it's very fun. It's a high-quality kind of game. It's not the typical game I would enjoy, but I'm enjoying myself. And I'm really glad I have it on the Switch so I can play it at home on the television in the comfort, and that's nice. But I also can just kind of, you know, just take it wherever it, It's I want nice and chill. Like that too. And... I've, I've been wanting a game like that. Like the other night, I was like, I wanted to play a game, but I didn't want to play Metro because it's kind of like survival horror. It's very tense and kind of like really have to pay attention. Like I just wanted to relax. And I was like, man, I wish Animal Crossing was out because that's like the perfect game. Now it's out. I'm just like, I sit back and I just relax. Oh, and I've been playing with my brother uh, the, with the multiplayer. Mm. Um, and that's been actually really useful. Oh, it kind of sucks. Yet. It's it's not amazing in my opinion. Because Are you doing you can... the local play or? Yeah, yeah, local okay. play, because we should um... we should try the not local play. Yeah, we should. But when you're doing the local play, the second person can't access their inventory. Mm. Um, they can only trade between their uh, items, so they're like shovels and you know their equipment. Um, that that's all they could do. And when they grab stuff, it goes into the recycle box in uh, the nook tent. Hmm. So they don't actually hold things for themselves. So they're pretty much they're just like helping you out right. rather than you guys I, I kind at the of, same time. So when you run when you max out your inventory, you just have them pick up all the stuff while you just keep mining away. Yeah, it's super useful. Okay. I mean, you can max out the inventory back at home, and it will start throwing things away. So you got to be careful about that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually super useful. And do, they you they can be chopping do down trees. Player characters thing. count as villager in your yes. town. They so like, count towards the total so you can have you'll have less NPCs than if you do that. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Can you make them move out? I assume so. I know you can go onto their account and force them to move out. But really? I don't know if you can do it from your account. Yeah. I mean, you can just. How do you do that? Where, where do they go? Nowhere. They just disappear. And their house gets destroyed, and all their progress is lost. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, Vooper is saying that Route 32 is it's where uh, Wo um, Woop Wooper lives in Johto. So, that huh. that makes sense. That that's pretty makes smart. Sense. Po Cold Outsider right now, though. Pokemon X Animal Crossing crossover would have been really cool. You know, what if there were, like, Pokemon you could catch in Animal Crossing? That'd be kind of cute. But I, I, I guess, like, they would like to stick with, like, real creatures. Right, like yeah, yeah, because everything what you collect or some is something real, or something that we for sure have found in the real world, right? Mm -hmm. 
Because I would love to, like, find, like, a dragon or something, but... Yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool, but it, but no. it doesn't... It would go against what they've done. Would people be mad about that, though? Like, if they found, like, a dragon instead? No, I think it'd be cool if they had, like, a... You can get an ore fish, which is pretty awesome. And that's real. Yeah. You could have the museum, and then you could have, like, a, a fantasy museum. I'm trying to think of a word, but, like, you know, like, like a museum that's separate, but it's, cryptid. like... Or a separate like, section of like, the museum. Like a, like for... a... Yeah, like yeah. a cryptid section. Crypt yeah, so it's like being this area is specifically for things that don't actually maybe exist. Maybe or maybe not real. Well, a cryptid could be real. Yeah. Because unconfirmed, right? Like like Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster would be a cryptid, right? But there's also other creatures that, for example, um, like Mega Megatherium, like which is a giant sloth that supposedly lives in the... Uh, Brazilian Amazon. We don't actually know, right? We've seen bones from thousands and thousands of years ago, so you knew it existed at some point, but we don't know if it ex if it's alive now, right? Some most scientists will say probably not, but there's some, you know, debate about that, which is why it's a cryptid, yeah. right? So it doesn't have to be like a mythical leprechaun creature, <laughs> but you know, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Um, wait, what? Jam is saying. I actually heard a dragon is in is in here. There's a dragon. The search is on. I, don't I will that. find the dragon. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna shoot it down from the sky. I don't want to do that. If I find a dragon. I'm not gonna touch it. I want to live on forever. Yeah. Yeah. Hello there, Robier. So, um, I think we're ready to move on from from Animal Crossing and start talking about our Nintendo Direct stuff. Also, yes, balloons are amazing. I'll call it outside right, though. It, it is really, really cool. So, um, what's going on here? So, the one one thing I want to bring up is there were some direct rumors that came out or in the week. And the source is kind of weird. It's kind of the source that I don't think I could really, like, like, it's sexual. What? Yes. <laughs> I don't, I'm not gonna, I can't, I feel like I'm not gonna go into specific details of the source, but basically, there's this Twitter user that brought up other things in the past, like E3 being cancelled and things along those lines, like they've sort of shown to have insider knowledge, right? And they also said that the next direct is gonna have Metroid and Zelda. So, that's pretty much it. They have a track record of getting things right. Metroid and Zelda. That's pretty. That that's it. If you want, if you don't know what I'm referring to, you can go to my direct predictions video. It's one of the sources in the description. Click on it. There's an article there which links to then the other source. But I'm just saying it is not a child friendly source. But nevertheless, they have a track history and they've gotten it right. Um, so I, it's weird. It's it's weird, but just that's almost why people kind of believe it more. Yeah, um, you know, it's strange. But anyway, how do you feel about the premise of Zelda and Metroid being in the direct? Um, it, I mean, it's very vague because, you know, I, you, I, especially on the Metroid side, you know, uh, we talk about 2D Metroid. Well, they, they, they did not specify, they but, say. but I'm going to guess right, 2D that's what Metroid. I'm, saying. I'm 2D guessing Metroid. T See, like, either that or, or Prime Trilogy. Right, right, right. Yeah. Not Prime 4, like, like. Now, if they were saying Prime and Four, I'd be like, "Nah, this is this is bull. This is not a true rumor." Um, That's the kind of thing that, if it happened, it would be the most magical thing of all time. But yeah. it's something we shouldn't expect, right? Which is why, if it does happen, it'll be incredible. But it's not mm. something we're gonna ex expect. Mm. It's no. Um, yeah. I'm expecting 2D Metroid. Which, if it's a brand new 2D Metroid, like if it's Metroid Five, which was one of my predictions. I'm down for that. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Like we, uh, an actual Metroid game that progresses a story. That's gonna be really cool. And keep in mind, it's gonna be on the Switch, right? So we get a 2D Metroid. This isn't gonna be some two, some 240p crap or pixely. I don't wanna say pixels crap, but my point, 240p is crap though. And the yeah. 3DS had a terrible, terrible resolution. But an HD Metroid game, like a 2D Metroid, the first time we'll actually have like a legitimate HD 2D Metroid game. That's going to be exciting. We've yet to have gotten a legitimate HD 
Metroid game, actually, when I think about it. Think, yeah, what have we gotten? Period. There's, there hasn't been a single HD Metroid. What world are we living in? Yeah. That just dawned on me. There is Technically, not. Technically, I think you can run Super Metroid at 1080p at some, some that, versions no. of the game. No, no, no. No, no, no that no. doesn't count. Well, I mean, like, I guess like you can play Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo uh, emulator on Switch Online, which does upscale to 1080p, right? So, mm-hmm. sure, but that is not. Technically, no, that doesn't count. Right, we're we're talking about a ground, a game made ground up in HD. Um, mm, doesn't exist. Yeah. No, not yet. It does not exist. That not is publicly. Crazy. So right. you know, even to get a 2D Metroid, which it wouldn't be 2D, it'd be 2.5D, like Metroid Samus Returns on 3DS, right? But that would look amazing. Um, so if we get that at least this year. Oh, I would love that. That'd be that'd be super right. awesome. Or if we get Prime Trilogy, that'll be also great because I have to imagine Prime Trilogy would be a nice remaster that would, you know, upscale the textures and add some extra little graphical effects and make the game look a lot better in HD, which apparently has not been a thing, which just dawned on me. Yeah. 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 There's just some of those series that just haven't made the jump to HD yet. That's just one of them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um... Zelda, oh god, I I think if Zelda's at this direct, then it's good news, you know, because I don't think that they would show Zelda in this direct to no. If Zelda's in this direct, say it's it was this in twenty twenty one, yeah. See, I I feel like Zelda might get internally delayed though. Like I'm really scared now because the 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 you know what the demonetization trigger is out there and it's messing it's messed stuff up, man. Delay it stuff. And I'm scared. But if we see it this direct, dude, and they confirm it for 2020, oh, the weight that would be lifted off my shoulders, great burden. Of okay. Fear. I want to. I want to. Control Alt Dan is saying something. He said, Andres, that non-child friendly source retweeted Wario 64 saying something about Metro Prime 4 by saying, "quote Get ready for some crazy news." End quote. Let's look into this, my friends, because. The hype of the, the, I Brian, I, I want to get back to your point in a bit, but this is something that, mm-hmm. if true, we have to kind of like veer completely off course to see what this is about, All right? So we're going to Twitter, we're going to Twitter, and we're going to investigate what was said here because this is exciting. So, Wario sixty four. Actually, I should probably check out the actual source for this. It's just it's kind of a weird source. Um, let me see here. Where is it? Okay, so yeah, this 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 um, user. Uh, <laughs> so the name of the Twitter user is Hot Girl Videos Plus Eighteen. Just for the just so you know what I'm referring to. Right. Um, oh, I feel like I've seen that. Yeah, you did. Here. You definitely saw it because it was a thing this week, right? Yeah. So the actual Twitter thing is weird, um, but I'm not gonna show any actual unchild friendly stuff here, guys. So don't worry. Um, not this is supposed. It's not technically a child-friendly channel, but it is like 13 and up, not 18 and up. But anyway, um, this part's fine. So, War 64 can't tell if Best Buy thinks Metro Prime 4 will release anytime soon or that the situation will last long. So it looks like what the Metro Prime 4 had a listing. All right, Best Buy Geek Squad order. We wanted to send you a quick note about your recent order, Metro Prime 4 Nintendo Switch, which we've chosen to pick up in our blah, blah, blah store because nothing is more important to us. Bro, bro, bro. What if, like, what if, you know? So, um, like, I, it, it, this person saying, get ready for some crazy news, like, because you know the whole notification from best buy it suggests that hey maybe there's something with, with metro prime 4 happening so maybe not but maybe they have a title drop for it so that the pre orders open up for it or something like that like dude i i, I know, why would they have I the pre orders open I this early i know though? how crazy it sounds i know i know look i know i know it's crazy i know it's crazy but like, what if? Like, it is a hypothetical situation 
It isn't real. This is imagination. This is fairy land world. But <laughs> what if? Like, just, just what if Metro Prime 4 was actually ready for release this year? Along oh with God. Breath of the Wild 2. The just, internet. I know. I know. Would just... It's crazy. The it world. would not happen. This is another universe where everything is beyond reality and happiness and joy. Like, this is something else. Yeah. But, like, what if? I don't believe it, for the record. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I'm like, no. a piece of me is, like, thinking, oh, man, what if? Right? Like, but but I don't believe it. Like, just, just to be clear. But what if it was real? What if, what if this actually, <clears throat> you know, like, this is happening? Like, remember how we talked about how... Nintendo said they restarted development, right? Mm -hmm. So when they when they say restart development, you're like thinking, okay, this is gonna at least be another three years, right? That makes sense, you know that that that's probably should be expected. Like my prediction is that Prime Four could come out holiday 2021, but that's like an optimistic mindset, right? Yeah, that's my optimistic mindset that it could come out like 21 months from now. From, from what we're talking about now, right? Like 20, 21 months from now. Um, this is something else. Um, probably not. I'm, like, point. don't believe. Don't, like, if this is real, great. But I feel like it's one of those things that it would be such an amazing announcement. Like, such an incredible, shocking surprise that we should just not expect it. I don't care what source. Yeah, Until that... I see it, I don't believe it. I'm not believing you yeah. until I see it. Until it happens, yeah. Yeah. I'm not believing but anything. But how, how could it be possible, though? Like, the only way I could see it being possible mm -hmm. is if Retro Studios already had a working engine, right, for mm -hmm. Metroid, right? And that working engine, they showed off to Nintendo in 2019. No, wait, wait, no. In 2018, in 2018, they canceled development, restarted in the like the second half of 2018, and then they just had a huge team, and they, you know, they took a lot of core concepts and ideas, recycled a lot of content, put that into the engine, and we were building out the, the content, like they knew exactly what, what they wanted to do early on 2019 or late 2018, and then they're just ste steaming through all the way up into a holiday 2020 release like that like that's i still i feel like that's still a stretch way. yeah it's still, I feel like still that's still hard. a stretch right um so i don't believe that but but unless it's just a massive amount of repurposed content from the original version yeah like that's that's the only way yeah yeah it had to be a lot and they said they were starting from scratch so technically i think they just said they were restarting i don't think they said specifically like but well, maybe they didn't. Maybe, maybe they didn't say specifically from scratch. Actually, it's an, it's an interesting, an interesting thing that I mean. How long is that video? Mm, like three minutes. That's too long. <laughs> is that too long? I don't know. I'm, I'm debating. We should like listen to their wording right now. I believe it was very vague. They're restarting, but they didn't really give much. That's that. Be it's a three minute video. Okay, I'm gonna put it on high speed. We're watching through it, guys, but with commentary. He's so great. It, yes, it's on high speed, just so we can speed through as faster. ファンの皆様からいただいた情熱あふれる言葉から実感しております。発表以降、皆様に何らかこう伝えてきた予定でしたが、その後も開発を継続した結果、大変心苦しいのですが、私たちがメトロイドプライムシリーズの特権となるこ
So, I mean, I'm the big. That sounds like from scratch, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't recycle anything. They could still recycle stuff, right. and it could still be an expedited development process. Possible. I'm sure a lot of graphical assets. It's like. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess in theory, they could still recycle some aspects from the initial development. Um, but we're pulling at straws here. We really don't know. I don't think we should expect that it's Metro Prime 4. But hey, if we get a teaser trailer this year, that's fine, right? Like my whole prediction was that how like similar to how like last year we got a teaser trailer for Zelda for Breath of the Wild 2 at E3, it would be the big holiday game and it would come out a year and a half later. Right, so maybe this year, at some point in the year, we get a teaser trailer for Prime 4, and then a year and a half after that, we get that for the big holiday game next year. That's my optimistic perspective. I think that's possible, right? But it could take longer. Same thing for Breath of the Wild 2. There's still debate whether that game's coming out this year, right? And we don't know. I'm hopeful it is, but then we also need to take into consideration the whole coronavirus impact, right? Like, even if the game was slated for this year, which was never set in stone, right? It hasn't been announced publicly, so therefore it's not set in stone. If it was internally planned to come out this year, as some rumors have suggested, that could be pushed because of the coronavirus. So we, you know, hard to say. But um, let me check on the chat, see what you guys are saying on this. Brandon, is there anything you have anything to add to that? Um, I think I'm just finding it more and more likely that it's going to get internally delayed. Like, I really wasn't worried about it at all, but now I'm like, ooh, it's kind of starting to sweat here. Sweating. Even yeah. Brandon's sweating. Brandon's usually uh, when he thinks something, he's like, "That yeah, this is it." I'm, I'm, I'm usually, I'm, I'm a little bit more wishy-washy. Like I kind of go back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. You, when, you, when you think something like in stone, yeah. yeah. This yeah. one, I'm like, "Ooh, uh, it's kind of getting scary up in here." Yeah. What do you think? You're just not sure. Yeah, I'm just not sure, man. All right, let's let's run through the chat here. Let's see what you guys are thinking. Control Dan, Metro Prime 4 Next Direct, even just a teaser? Ah! Yeah, what if, man? Ah! I know. Um. Cold Outsider right now, though. What if Goku versus Superman? I know. Crazy thought. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it would be crazy if somehow Prime 4 was ready this year, but that's not happening. Control all Dan, it can't happen, it just can't happen. Don't do this to us, Andres. I am not, hey, hey, I am not saying it's happening. I am not saying that, not at all. No, no, I do not, do, I do not expect Prime 4 to be ready at all this year. I do not expect it. But if it happens, that'd be so cool. But it's not ready, no. JM, at this point, I want Prime 4 over Breath of the Wild too. Interesting. That's heresy. Control out Dan. Metro Prime 4 releases in 2023. That's my guess. That is far off. I, I say 2022 at the latest. 2023 seems like real, real far. No. Well, I guess that'd be like so, five years. Well, that's the thing though. Four years. Uh, the four I guess years. the argument to be made is that four or five. Um, it seems like Nintendo is treating this like Zelda development, right? Like, it's a big deal, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if that's the case, if we're in Zelda development territory, then a five-year development cycle is not out of the question. If you think of it from that perspective. However, you also take into consideration that they still did stuff before they restarted development, right? They had a whole other development cycle. There is a lot of things that they talked about, concept things they tried out. To think that they have nothing at all from that Mm -hmm. They gotta have something from that. I also gotta think Zelda is a big open world adventure RPG game, whereas Metroid is more of a uh, slightly linear exploration shooter game. It's never been well, super. We don't long. know what they're doing with Prime Four. Right, right, right. But you know, assuming it's follows the same route as the other Prime games, which I assume it will. Um, but also, it should be said it that it can it's have not... the Breath of Wild quality without having to take us on because it's not as big right. of a game you know? right i mean mario odyssey is comparable in quality and it did not take that long right and also yeah. breath of the wild 2 isn't looking to take that long either right right um it, it kind of it, it, it <clears throat> depends and the whole breath of the wild situation i think one thing we had to take into consideration here is that when nintendo accomplished the breath of the wild was enormous because it wasn't so much that they made another great zelda game 
they made a Zelda game that is the best-selling Zelda game of all time, right? It is, besides Ocarina of Time, the most well-received Zelda game ever, right? It is one of the highest-rated games of all time. And this game, um, at this level, at this stage, right? Like, the further into history we get, like, in terms of, like, like as, as games become more and more modern, it is harder to sort of set the reset the bar, like raise the bar, right? Because right. the bar is already very high. Nintendo, without making any other open world game beforehand, with having minimal experience with HD development and open world development, they went and took Zelda and made it not just open world, open air. They raised the bar for open world games with Breath of the Wild. They actually changed mm -hmm. the gaming landscape and the standard for those kinds of games. And since playing Breath of the Wild, any other Breath open world game I've played, even on more powerful hardware, has paled in comparison. A great example, Horizon Zero Dawn. It came out a month before Breath of the Wild. Graphically, like if you look at images, yes, Horizon Zero Dawn looks like it's made on obviously more powerful hardware, but in terms of gameplay, in terms of the interactivity of the world and what's going on in the world, it feels so stagnant and lifeless mm -hmm. by comparison. Um, and there's so much limitation in terms of how of your exploration. It, it just, it doesn't, when you play it and you see it in motion, it just doesn't seem nearly as great as Breath of the Wild. And that's a, not to say Horizon Zero Dawn isn't a good game. It definitely is. But it's just that Breath of the Wild raised the standard significantly. So they had a huge accomplishment there. And a lot of that had to do with the physics engine, which has been noted on several occasions is why the development took so long. They had delays to make sure that they could really master that physics engine in Breath of the Wild. That is a big reason why they were able to be so successful with the game. And now that's been established, yeah. right? So point is, the five-year development cycle, that's kind of like an aberration. That is not the norm. So, you know, Prime 4 doesn't have to have a five-year development cycle after already having restarted its initial development cycle. Yeah. I think three years is more of the, you know, good educated guess, I'd say. And I'll also say that Since I'm sure... the other Metro games didn't take very long to make. No, they're like actually, they all had like two, two and a half year development cycles. They were way yeah. faster. Um, but it's a different era. And at, Yeah, but at that time, those were like really pushing the graphical envelope for the console. Mm -hmm. Like Met, the original Metroid Prime was just an absolute showpiece for hardware and tech oh, at yeah. that time you're right like cross generate across all the systems it was one of the best looking and most like just you know advanced games that was there so it's not like it wasn't pushing you know content at the time you know because a lot of their tools and stuff it was yeah hd development you have to add a lot more stuff but the tools we have to create stuff is also so much better you can do things so much faster so in the end, it, it ends up being not that much longer, actually, to do a much bigger, more graphically intensive game than before, because before, the tools kind of sucked. <laughs> and there was a lot of limitations you saw to work around. So development time was more focused on trying to actually get things to work for you. That's an interesting point. Right. Um, in a lot of ways, yeah, development has gotten a lot easier. So that that's uh, definitely something else to consider. Um, Caleb five stars entertainment. I think we'll get a smash reveal, but I will be like Joker with no gameplay in the upcoming. It'll be like Joker with no gameplay in the upcoming direct. Um, possible. Yeah, actually, we haven't talked about that as well. Brandon, how do you feel about the potential smash delay? You know, do you know what I'm referring to? There was a I've, column. I've kind of heard about it. So there wasn't like an official announcement that mm -hmm. hey, smash content is going to take longer to come. But there was a column from Sakurai, right? You know how we get our different columns from Sakurai. And it was translated. And basically what was said was that because of the of a COVID-19 situation, right? Uh, Sakurai ha had to cancel plans to visit other publishers um, to discuss plans for different characters, right? So, right. and he said that that's going to lead to delays and it's going to impact development. And he anticipates that if they, they may have to shut down soon and that could slow down development a lot because they won't be able to right. go to the office um so literally that yes would impact development but i'll say that none of that there explicitly says that they do not have a character that's almost ready for reveal mm -hmm. soon so i think it's within reason that there could still be an announcement for a character 
um, in yeah. this upcoming direct. That's my me being optimistic. I think it's possible that it may not happen. We should pre be right. prepared for that and maybe not expect a character really soon. Or if we do get this first character really soon, maybe after that, there might be a little bit longer of a delay. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think it for sure means there won't be anything to show off no, in this next I don't direct. Think so. I mean, you it know, could mean I that, mean, though. There's a lot of theories that COVID 19 has been the reason behind the the directs delay so one of the announcements that they're delaying for could be a smash character and they're still getting that ready um because you know a lot of people think that there's announcements that they want to do but they're still trying to figure out things you know because the, you know, the situation's so sudden so maybe smash was among them and maybe they got it up in time you know it's been so long like you gotta think they had a direct plan for like january february right it's been months so maybe maybe in that time that they've gotten um a smash character ready you know, maybe they had it planned to uh, have one announced a little bit earlier and they've got it ready by now. Could be. Could be. Uh, JM uh, said this or asked this. Anderson Brandon, which would you want more at this point? Breath of the Wild sequel or Prime 4? Breath of the uh, Wild sequel. No question. I want a Breath of the Wild sequel. Right now, my mind space my hype levels are screaming breath of the wild zelda right so right now i'm in a more of a zelda mindset right but also because i'm more prepared for zelda right i i'm i've i've sort of put metroid in a little bottle or a big bottle with leaks it it still sort of like comes out at times but i yeah. put it back in there uh, that's like sort of w I'm waiting to sort of get on that hype train um, but in turn but assuming both all everything was equal right like which one would I want more mm. it's not any question for me prep the wild too well you're you're yeah but you're not that big of a Metroid fan compared to me no right? not compared to you no. um so like is it both of them are like my favorite gaming like mario zelda and metroid are my three favorite series like and i mean like not like any mario game I mean like the 3d super mario games the three mm -hmm. legend of zelda games and the metroid prime games those are my three favorite gaming series of all time so um you know like another metroid prime 4 is basically like another mainline zelda to me huge right and actually prime 4 I'll, you know, I'm, I'm going to give Prime 4 the edge a little bit just because we haven't had a new Metroid in years, right? But, I mean, if I had to rank, like, what is um, my favorite series, it's Zelda. Oh, man. Super Mario and then Metroid. But it's, like, like 199 and 98. Uh, like the difference in terms of desire is like, it's like there and the only reason prime four is probably like like a smidge lower in terms of my overall favorite series is just because there haven't been that many of them they have it hasn't been a consistent series so they haven't had as many opportunities to excite me as of late as mario and zelda have right with mario and zelda right. i got skyward sword and twilight princess right um we got prime three that was it prime three came out around twilight princess right and both those games actually made me cry at the end just for the record um but uh, after that we got skyward sword there was no other pr prime game to come out around skyward sword meanwhile we got mario galaxy and then mario galaxy 2 and then recently we've gotten mario odyssey and breath of the wild there's been no right. prime um so you know there's that and then also there's 3d world i forgot about that one uh <laughs> yeah 3d world was good but not not really not good. that good but still pretty good right uh and then there's also a link between worlds and 3d land which are pretty good link between games. worlds is amazing those are pretty good games as well we did get metric samus returns but that was a remake uh which was fun i liked it mm -hmm. a lot but not it wasn't as good as link between worlds or 3d land in my opinion if there was a whole new metroid game that would have been great there was federation force <laughs> yeah yeah you know an okay uh, game apparently yeah, so I and I think we need uh, we need Prime Four um, because the series needs it. it. It has in terms of quality, it's right up there. Was it's not right up there. It is like I feel like right up there could suggest it's like within the same 
arena of quality, Prime 4 is like the same level of quality as like Metroid Prime is the same level of quality as Zelda. Like Metroid yeah. Prime is one of the greatest games of all time, right? Like that that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a game to be at that level. So it's just basically Space Zelda. Yep. <laughs> it's Space Zelda. Awesome. It's a, it's an yeah. absolute Yeah. Yeah. Um but Breath of the Wild it's just like a whole new level of gaming. Right. So Metro Prime 4 has a huge, a tall, it's, that's a high bar to reach in terms of quality. And obviously Prime 4 is not going to be gameplay wise like Breath of the Wild, but in terms right. of quality, like Prime 4 needs to reach the quality level similar to Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. That's what it deserves. Will Nintendo hit it? I think they will. I think that's exactly why, one of the reasons why we, ha- we they've taken so long to show us anything because that's yeah. what they're dead set on doing, bringing us a game of that caliber. Mm-hmm. So and and just for me, like it doesn't, it's never gonna be enough to beat out Zelda. Like Zelda's just my like my favorite of anything, period. Yeah, so, I mean I understand where you're coming from, um, because Zelda is also my favorite franchise, uh, as well. But I think, I just think Metroid hasn't had the opportunity to really garner enough love as much as Zelda and Mario have, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's it, that's the sad thing. Like, you're saying that so confidently, and I'm in agreement with you because I also feel that Zelda is, is is it is my favorite franchise. But I think that if Metroid had as much opportunity, there wouldn't be as many people who would say Zelda over Metroid. Right, I'm um, right. There, it's, it's yeah. just Zelda. Metroid just hasn't had the opportunity. It needs that opportunity mm-hmm. because it could totally do it, but yeah. it just hasn't happened. But going back to the rumors, so both Metroid and Zelda may show up in the direct to some capacity, according to rumor. I think that's possible regardless of rumor. So, you know, yeah. Breath Watch shows up. I uh, it can only be good news. In my- yeah, and for the record, when I say Metroid, I'm not talking about Prime Four. I'm talking about like a 2D Metroid or a Prime yeah. Trilogy. Yeah. God, I would like Prime Trilogy to finally be a thing, so we can stop wondering what's happening with Prime Trilogy. Yeah. I've, I've it's the like same my... thing with Pikmin Four. I just so, want to know. This is what's gonna happen. Um, you know how like every time we have a potential direct, I predict uh, Prime Trilogy. Mm-hmm. I am not predicting Prime Trilogy for this direct. Here you go. It's gonna happen. That's right. <laughs> but I'm. I'm no. I'm saying it's not happening. No. I don't know. No, 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 no. No wink, wink. It's not going to be there. That's my prediction. It's not going to be there. <laughs> right? So, um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm at least, I'm thinking something Metroid for sure. My my thinking is a 2D Metroid. Maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, is Metroid 5. Which is a 2D Metroid game. For, I, I keep on hearing like people getting confused. Like Metroid Five, when people say Metroid Five, they're not talk, they're not confusing with Prime Four, right? It's two different things. It's kind of like n- New Super Mario Bros. versus Super Mario, right? Super Mario, 3D Mario game. Mario Bros. 2D Mario game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Legend of Zelda doesn't have that distinction. It's just kind of like Legend of Zelda this, Legend yeah. of Zelda that. Um, yeah, Metroid Prime is that is a separate thing first person metroid games and when, whenever you just hear metroid without the prime that is a 2 referencing a 2d metroid game metroid 5 would be happening after fusion which is metroid 4 yeah so um control out dan is asking why do you think prime trilogy won't be at the direct well the reason i don't think prime trilogy won't be at the direct is because i want it at the direct <laughs> And every time I want it there, that that's my re- that's my actual reasoning. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, the reality is is that we've been waiting for it for such a long time. Maybe they finally show it, but at, at this point, I mean, I don't know when it's gonna happen, right? It could be this year. It could be in this direct. Even if it is coming out this year, that's one of the things. That's I think that's one of those things they don't have to show off now. They could mm-hmm. they could show off Mar- Prime Trilogy at around E3 time, and that could come out around September or October. Because it's it would be a yeah. remaster, it's not a whole ground up new game, so it doesn't need as much development time or time to hype up and things of that nature. So like heck, it might even be revealed in a September direct, and it could come out sometime next year, right? It could be That's early possible. 2020, yeah, exactly. 
So I don't you think this remakes in the beginning of the year before. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think something along like along those lines could be the case. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Brandon. So Metroid and Zelda. You think both are gonna be there or no? Uh, do I think both are gonna be there? I want to say yes because I want to believe. But do I actually think? Dude, if it wasn't with the virus, I'd be like 100%. Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. The virus is throwing a wrench and everything. But I got to stand on the side of hope and and belief and say, yes, both of them. Both of them will be it's there. Happening. It's going to be great. It's happening. It's going to be the direct of directs. We're just assuming there is going to be direct. Like, we don't even know for sure if there will be. Like, <laughs> oh there's so going to be. There's got to be. We've, we've talked about it repeatedly, right? Um, I think. The, the thing to take that by the way if anyone in the chat has any doubt explain why you think it might not happen i mean because we've been waiting for so long right i mean i guess that's an argument right there like why does it have to be now the reason why it has to be now is because there's going to be an investors meeting at the end of the month and we don't know about any released out yeah. release dates for any yeah. published nintendo games animal for the crossing rest of the was kind of that one it's like oh well they got animal crossing so they're fine well animal crossing is out damn it and there's literally nothing <laughs> there's else nothing. That There's we like we know Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is slated for this year, um, mm -hmm. but we don't know when. There isn't right. a set release date for it, and that's it. Nothing else has any <clears throat> confirmed release dates for 2020 that are being published by Nintendo. Um, is Bravely I, Default 2 not being published? Well, by that's Nintendo? The, I was about to bring that up. Bravely Default 2 and No More Heroes 3, Nintendo may in some way be assisting with, so maybe they might technically be a publisher for, especially Bravely Default 2, because they also technically yeah. published Octopath Traveler, right? Yeah. I think so. They might be they might be publishing that, and that is slated for 2020. So that could be an exception, but still, like Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, it does not have a set release date. So. Um, yeah, but we need release dates. We know nothing. We know nothing that. at all. So um, the investor, and it's not so much about us. It's the investors, right? The investors need to know what they're investing in. Mm -hmm. So some something has to come really soon. And we've talked about it. Venture Beat, there's an article from Jeff Grubb. He said that, they're, that they're, they were finalizing a direct, right? He also said they were also going to have a Nindies showcase. They did. He said it would be this week. It happened this week. He's guessing that the direct will happen around March 26th, which is a Thursday. I think that's probably right. So, yeah, guys, I'm pretty sure there's a direct next week. If we're wrong, hey, wouldn't be the first time. Um, but I would be blown away if 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 so we bad. don't get one before the investors meeting. Nintendo's oh, stock will that. probably drop from that. I'm not, I don't know too much about yeah. stock, but from what i understand if your investors have no information about what's to come at all <laughs> that's really bad like yeah like they'll like literally nothing there's no set release dates nothing so they they're kind of i think i'm pretty sure there has especially to be especially in the year this. when two new consoles are dropping come right on. that's our whole other thing though they need to do come something on. so and xbox and playstation have been hyping it up lately but you know how you yeah, steal that thunder Xbox. you want to know you steal that thunder you show Xbox off zelda too. you show off a new mario kart you show off metroid boom that's killer right i mean yeah. zero chronicles definitive edition that's gonna be huge because that's a basically an open world game i don't know if it's technically open world but it's basically open world right uh and that is a remake it's not a remaster it's a remake yeah. and it's, it's pretty cool so that game's gonna be special especially they add a lot of new content as, as they sort of suggested with the first trailer that's gonna be a big yeah. deal and the rumor is, is that's coming out in may considering that we got an esrb rating we gotta for know about it now yeah by the way we're sort of sliding into our far. predictions already brandon let me just tell you my predictions and let me see how you sort of fare with that right i guess it's sort of a spoiler for, for my video i haven't seen it yet but hey just watch it anyway um or oh i deleted all my predictions okay i remember them by heart don't worry about it so um my predictions are um I'm 50-50 on a smash reveal. I'm really pulling for some sort of smash reveal, right? But what my, my my speculation is that because of the, the delays, they won't have a third-party character ready for announcement. They'll replace it with a first-party character instead. Okay. And one thing I'm very confident in is that the next Direct, when it does happen, 
Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is going to have a big focus in there. And given that they're going to be focusing on Xenoblade Chronicles, if they're going to have to use a Nintendo character for reveal instead of a normal third-party Smash character for the Fire's Pass, if there is a Xenoblade character in the works, this will be a good time to show it off. If, and if, if there is going to be a Xenoblade character, I'm definitely going to side with Rex and Pyra. But I'm also going to acknowledge that Melia from Xenoblade 1 also makes sense as well. She is not in um, the final Smash for Shulk. And Melia does seem to be getting a bit more of a focus with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. So we'll see. One of those two, I think, could potentially be it. Going past a potential Smash character reveal and Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, I expect a reveal for Paper Mario. Um, Metroid. I can see Paper Mario be, perhaps being hauled off for another time, but I think it there's a good chance it'll be there. I think we'll also see a reveal for a Pikmin 3 port coming as well. I also anticipate the 2D Metroid, right? And 2D Metroid would be kind of like a Link's Awakening sort of thing. And then going beyond that, yeah. I expect a Bayonetta 3. I expect more information on No More Heroes 3. I expect more information on Braille Default 2. And I also think we'll get some third-party mm. reveals such as the Bio Bioshock The Collection. Right. That is one of the rate games on there. I think that we could see that. I have hope that we could get some content from Microsoft, perhaps Master Chief Collection or Rare Replay. But if we do mm. get that, I'm thinking that something's going to be announced in the middle of the year around E3 time. I know I'm how not it... sure. Go on. Just because I think Microsoft is obviously very focused on talking about their new console so mm. e3 time well obviously e3 the event is not going to be held but they're still going to do like the digital stuff mm. um they're going to be full ham on their uh xbox series x games and all that kind of stuff so now might be the good time if they are collabing with microsoft on something to show it off now instead of um during e3 when microsoft's focused on uh the next gen Okay, I see your point there. Um, maybe you're right. Um, I guess my perspective simply is that maybe I'm asking for too much in one direct. But at the same right, time, right. I think it should be noted that one point that I bring up in my video, and we've talked about it on the podcast before, I'm pretty sure, um, is that the this direct that supposedly will happen next week or this week, if you count Sunday as the first day of the week, technically it is, um, needs to outline what's coming out throughout the year one for the investors right but i don't just mean up until summer i mean like the outline for the rest of the year because uh for example if you go back to every one of the last three years for the switch we knew about the holiday games by this point in the year every time let's go back to 2019 we knew about luigi's mansion 3 and pokemon sword and shield right let's go back to the year before that we knew about Pokemon Let's Go and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Mm -hmm. Actually, we knew a Pokemon game was coming. I don't know if they had shown it off yet. They might not have shown off Let's Go, but we knew a Pokemon game was coming. Uh, yeah, I think they showed off Let's Go in May. Right. But Super Smash Bros. Ultimate from Nintendo was revealed by the March Direct, right? Mm -hmm. And then in 2017, we got Xenoblade Chronicles and Super Mario Odyssey those were revealed in the january that year right so even earlier point is by each year we already have a good understanding what the big holiday games are going to be for that year come this right. time in the year by april we already know um as far as we know now there's nothing <laughs> like there's it, nothing there's nothing <laughs> so this direct given that it's been and another thing to take into consideration here this is the longest drought for nintendo direct of all time right so Given that's the longest drought of all time, given that the investors know nothing about release dates, given that we already that if you look at history, we've known about the big holiday game or games uh, by this time in the year, I have a very strong expectation that this direct is going to have a lot of announcements to make for the year. Now, the yeah. one thing that sort of hurts this theory is that COVID-19 is causing a lot of issues with the world right now. That could greatly impact development. This could be a bad year because of it. And that's would be unfortunate totally possible though so that's concerning um but if COVID 19 wasn't a part of the equation i would for sure be saying this is going to be like the best direct of all time because there's a lot to show off yeah. um but COVID 19 is an element here so we could be looking at a much slower year because of it question is how much of it will really impact them mm -hmm. 
don't know. It's very true. You just gotta think. The good thing about like game creation, you know, obviously I'm not a video game creator. I might be talking completely out of my ass, but it Working seems on, like though. something that would yes, true. That would be easy to switch to doing from home. Obviously, communication would be the hard part. Um, but if you have technology, you can do a lot of really good things. Conferences, virtual conferences. You have you can send data. Um, you can send it through the cloud. You can hold data in the cloud. A lot of it, and you can have you can pull things from your work computer to your computer home if you need to. You can set it back and forth. Like. It's, it seems like it'd be inconvenient because getting, um, you know, face-to-face obviously is much quicker and, you know, communication I think would be slower. But the actual, like, game creation, I mean, you can have all the tools and stuff at home. Um, so you could be making stuff um, for that. So I think asset production and things like that shouldn't be impacted too, too much. Um, it's more things like trying to, you know, think about level design and, and uh, storyboarding and might be tricky to do but i mean as i've said like we have conference call there's so much technology out there literally just about like conferences and stuff and just like communicating like facetime has evolved so much and they have even just a dedicated units just specifically for facetiming and things just to make facetiming really well um so i mean we have one of like the facebook ones or something yeah sell. in theory so. they should be able to work from home and get all the work done I guess yeah. um, there would be a concern of security and maintain the privacy of some of this stuff. Um, I guess. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know. Well. Yeah, in not... theory, as somebody who obviously doesn't actually know what they're talking about completely, um, but with an educated guess it seems like that would be relatively easy obviously not as easy as doing it from the office i'm not saying that i'm not saying it'd be the exact same it'd obviously be more tough but it doesn't seem you know like something you couldn't overcome yeah uh, i think it's definitely i i kind of agree with you i think it could happen but kind of based off what the soccer i call them it's suggestive of bad things, right? Mm. Like if they, if they he was talking about stopping development of the Smash DLC until they're no longer quarantining. Um, Oof. Yeah, uh, hard to say. Uh, I just hope that whatever delay there is, it's, it's insignificant or just not that noticeable, right? Like if, like say, hey, if it means we get Zelda in December instead of October, great. <laughs> Right, if it, but I can I can take that, but it, I I wouldn't want to wait till like March. That would suck. But I mean, if that's what has to happen, that's what has to happen. But yeah. you know, I hope not. But anyway, just going back to my my predictions, right? So, uh, my thing about not predicting the Master Chief or Microsoft stuff during this direct is simply just because I don't think that's necessary right now. But maybe it would be. Maybe they would do that. So it's possible. That's just not part of my predictions. Just, just, isn't. Okay. just because I don't want to put too much in one thing, uh, one presentation. But uh, basically, so Paper Mario, 2D Metroid, Pikmin Port, Bayonetta 3, Breath of the Wild 2, mm-hmm. and Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Oh, no, you don't want Metroid. You're not Metroid. Not did, did I not mention Metroid? 2D Metroid. Yeah, 2D Metroid. Paper Mario, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. You might not mention it, I just didn't. I'm not uh, sure. Bayonetta three. I can't say I just my order is all out of whack. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think we. I think we. Yeah. Sure. Oh, and also Mario Kart. All right. I'm, uh, and you, think, you said Bioshock. Bioshock. Right. The, yeah, Bioshock the collection as well. Yeah, obviously, and and tra- seeing No More Heroes three and Barely Default two. I don't think it's crazy. Those games are already announced. Right, as well, Xenoblade Chronicles Edition as well. Um, in terms of new announcements, mm-hmm. in terms of new announcements, um, it's let me let me get this right: Paper Mario, Pikmin Three Port, Two D Metroid, Bioshock the Collection, um, maybe a Smash announcement, Bayonetta Three trailer reveal, Breath of the Wild Two trailer, and perhaps an announcement for Super Mario Kart World. 
Okay. That's what I'm calling it, by the way, Super Mario Kart World. Or Super Mario Kart. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it'll be really cool. Yeah. It'd be really cool if Retro Studios actually actually collabed with the Mario Kart team to get this done. And we see Monita in it. <laughs> yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah. And thus, the, the it'll finally be answered. Amazing. The, the great mystery of, of, of Monita in the concept yes. art that was yes. leaked or revealed by Reggie when he left Nintendo. It is still such a great mystery. And yeah. Just in general, what the hell Retro Studios is doing and has yeah. been doing yeah. for the past several years is just... I don't know. Nobody knows. So... I don't think we'll see Retro Studios game. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I'm... Nope. Mm. I'm with you. Duma plays added me. Security is something that you would want set up beforehand. Monolith did, however, do that entirely through Xenoblade Chronicles 2. What do you mean exactly by the security? Do you mean they worked at home? I mean, if, if that's... I'm, I think he just means... Sh- sharing resources with other developers in oh right like like you know like i'm not in one place i like carrying the information to another studio like literally just emailing them or whatever i guess it's possible yeah i guess you can still share that securely um because i'm sure the people like at mons the people at mons have to work in breath of the wild probably worked from their own studio i assume maybe okay. they did yeah I, if that, I guess from that perspective of just like, you know, managing different parts of a game remotely. Okay, All right, man, maybe. But I guess the thing is that you're still it's one studio from another studio, right? In studios, mm-hmm. as opposed to, like, doing it from people's personal homes, like, yeah, fifty, hundred, two hundred have... people being in separate homes, like each individually, is a little yeah, different than, it is than a lot different. want from one big studio to another big studio. It depends on how they share their data. Or their, their, yeah. You know, Maybe they have a imp- special or... secret Nintendo network where they share all this information. I mean, they all, I, I assume that they have huge amounts of cloud like data space where they keep stuff. I assume. Imagine hacking into that. <laughs> Jesus. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. So, Duma plays the saying, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was made by very few people and outsourced most of the game. Every menu was built by a different team. They're a studio that specializes in doing these things. That would explain why every menu looked completely different. <laughs> I think yeah. Torna's menus looked a lot better. They were a lot more coherent. Real Bear yeah, saying he wants a Doom Slayer in Smash with his three different yes. models. Yes! That'd be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, it'd be fun to try out Doom Eternal at some point because that's getting a lot of hype as well you still haven't finished the original though or no. 2016 no i gotta play through that too it was pretty cool but i actually I just haven't finished it uh i'll get back to it someday maybe on one it's rainy fantastic. day it's, it's the sh- closest thing you have right now to the next metroid game no it's go. not the same it's not it is um, very and it's not though feeling in a way. I get what you're saying like there are similarities but it's not even close yeah they're very different games I I, I, get, I, I know what like... you mean though. I'm not trying to disagree I'm just like joking but like yeah like I know that like the perspective and some of the, the platforming elements like there are similarities mm-hmm. with that I mean obviously it's visor gameplay too right like you're, you're wearing a visor yeah yeah so I, I totally understand that. But no, yeah, it, it's very different, but at the same time. But the, that's why I said it's the closest thing. Yeah, I mean, it. it I guess you probably... I mean, the only other thing would be like Bioshock. Like Bioshock might have more similar gameplay because it's considered more of a first-person adventure, like Metroid Prime, as opposed to Doom, which is a first-person shooter, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's, a, it's a blurred line situation. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get it, though. So... Um. Yeah. What 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 are your predictions, Brandon? What do you where do you sort of stand on here? Because oh. yeah, my crazy predictions are Mario Kart World, Breath of the Wild Two, Bayonetta Three, 
Paper Mario, 2D Metroid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trying to think of like what even they could announce. Um, you know what? I don't think we have a Mario Sports tile for this year, and there's usually one, you know. Okay, so you're predicting oh, there shit. won't be Mario Sports. No, I'm predicting there will be. Oh. So and hopefully, fingers, toes, and every appendage crossed, it's Mario Strikers Switch. Or as Ooh, I like to call it Mario Strikers Supercharged. I don't know if they'd go with that name, it's just an evolution on the naming scheme they've already had so okay i want that so i mean if they announce that that'd be pretty high but i mean we do supposedly paper mario and even mario kart might come out so i don't know maybe there's just not gonna be a mario sports this year maybe there's just already enough mario stuff yeah but it, it's my opinion that i don't think both paper mario and mario kart 9 would be same year just it feels like usually we get like a bigger tier mario game and then we get like the smaller like sports titles the other mario mm. games I feel, I feel like paper mario and mario kart 9 are both very big releases but i mean they could go both in the same year i'm not saying that it's like crazy to think that they would i'm just thinking maybe not because they're both pretty big like you know the okay. higher up there i mean they're not that's mario that's odyssey but yeah. at the same time that's what i'm saying like mario odyssey and mario kart 9 would never come out the same like 100 like that would not happen i understand mario kart 8 deluxe came out but that was a port that's not the same as an enhanced port i don't think a new brand new mario kart game and the new 3d like no, unless yeah, that's i agree before, but i don't think so yeah i'm, like, I'm, I'm sort of uh year. i if 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 a big 3D Mario game comes out this year, all oh great. But I, I've kind of moved on from that right now, mm -hmm. and just thinking it's a next year thing. Um, like if if rumors would have you believe that there is no big Mario or Zelda coming out this year, like this, <laughs> the rumors would have you believe that hey, all you're gonna get is remakes and ports. Like that's it. Have a, have at it. You're welcome. Um, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. yeah um okay so you're thinking it's one or the other right it's either mario odyssey or mario kart or Mar paper mario i don't think mario odyssey 2 is coming out. so you think it's we get either... you think we get paper mario mario kart and mario strikers no that's what i'm saying i think no. we would get two of those three yes that's what i'm two saying. of those three okay yes 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 i'm saying either so i think yeah, two of those three. Um, okay. I am slightly cautious about predicting both Mario Kart 9 and Paper Mario to come out the same year. That's why I was. So that's why I'm saying maybe it was a sports title and one of the two. But I, I don't think it'll be all three no matter what. Um, but maybe it is just. I, I feel like they're all different enough from each other, right? They all have. Yeah. Uh, I just think. So my perspective with predicting both. Uh, Mario Kart, uh, I'm calling it Mario Kart World, right? Mario Kart World. The reason I, I'm, I'm thinking Mario Kart World is because that implies something grander, right? Something more encompassing of perhaps more Nintendo IP, like sort of just basically expanding on the idea they had with the Mario Kart 8 DLC, where bringing other characters like Link and Isabel and things like that, but also perhaps integrating a hub world, kind of like Diddy Kong Racing. That's kind of like my ideal Mario Kart game, and I think that's one way they can sort of set themselves yeah. apart from previous Mario Kart games. But the reason why I'm predicting both that and Zelda's the two big holiday games for the year is I think Nintendo needs more than just one of them for it to be a good year. And I especially think yeah. that if, if they have to choose between one one of them, it has to be Zelda over Mario Kart. Because mm -hmm. one, there's already Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Two, in turn, if you look at like the years we've gotten, like excluding 2017, it hasn't really the other years haven't really been great years for like single player adventure games from Nintendo. They need another banger along those lines. They have plenty of party, social, multiplayer kind of games already. So I think they yeah. would be taking a bit of an L if they didn't do Zelda. At least in terms of like catering to like the hardcore gamer, right? Especially the kind of people that would that might like for example, if we don't get Zelda this year, me as a hardcore Nintendo fan. 
I would be, I would think, oh man, if there's like a bit, like say for example, if somehow like Horizon Dawn, Zero Dawn 2 came out, um, you know, and it was kind of like Breath of the Wild in terms of gameplay, and that came out along with PS5 this year, right? I would think about getting that, right? Or for example, Halo 6, like something like, you know what I mean? Um, so mm-hmm. it, I think uh, Nintendo really needs to get Zelda out this year. Um, if they don't, you know, sucks. They, they can only do what they can, right? But I think that they're pulling to get Zelda and they want something else, something, a big multiplayer game to sort of complement that, right? Because I think having both is ideal, yeah. right? Um, so I hope it, they, they get both and I hope it it's it's there and then the Switch does well, especially with the next gen coming out. And I think paper, you know, because the, I think the, the, the closest thing we've gotten to like a single player adventure game has been Luigi's Mansion 3. It's a co-op so far, game. Like, and recently. It's co-op technically. With mini, it, with mini games. It has those, but that's not the main focus. I get it. It's a great single game. Player. I'm enjoying it, by the way. I'm, I'm like, like, I have like two, like two or three levels left. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm playing for I, I 100% think... completion, by the way. So I have almost right. all the gems. Almost. There's like one gem in the bottom, the bottommost floor, like the the boiling water. Oh, raising room. God, I hate, I that, hate, hate that. You hate it I too. Hate that level. That's my sucks. least favorite level. So and they bad. make you the revisit it. Sucks. They make you revisit it too. Yes. And I was like, no. I have a question for you. Do you know if you can raise the water back up? I don't. Because there's this one gem that I haven't been able to get, and I wonder if it's because I need to do it with the water raised. They wouldn't do that though, right? They wouldn't just make it impossible. No, for, impossible no, for they you would to never get. make it. They would never make it impossible. Yeah. There have been times where it's impossible unless you reset the level. I had that happen. So like, you can mess with something and then just screw yourself out of gem until you reset the level by leaving it back. That can happen. Hundred percent. I've had that happen. Right, but I can't reset the water. No. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't I'm seem not, like it. I don't. I don't know what gym you're talking about because I haven't done all of them, and I hate that place. So I was like, really just through there. So, uh, but I, I'd imagine, yeah, you have to. There's some way to get it. I just don't know. Okay. Hmm. Duo plays out of me. This is all supposed to be the big third party time. Let's see our new monster hunter. Hey, new monster hunter would be fantastic. Mm-hmm, yeah, be good. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, my point, my point of bringing Luigi's Mansion 3 up is would be that Paper Mario would be a similar level of quality, hopefully, you'd hope. Um, like I a similar tier. It. No. You'd hope. I, I know what you're going, I know what you're going for. No. You might be right, but I don't, I... It could be. It honestly could, could be. be. Like, if, if, it's, if they yeah. actually returned to form and if it's... made, like, a good Paper Mario game, like, Thousand Year Door like quality paper mario game it would be i mean we had some quality games in 2019 don't get me wrong like sword and shield was a quality yeah. game not really enough in terms of like i mean i love pokemon because i'm a big pokemon fan i get into the whole battling scene but in terms of just it being like a single player campaign it's just good it's not amazing right um but then there's luigi's mansion 3 and then we also had fire Emblem three houses and we also had astral yeah. chain and we had Link's awakening right and we had mario maker 2 my record two does not count. No, but it does. And that it counts as first party, but it does not count as a like single player. Oh no 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 yeah I just meant like games in general. Um, but right, in terms of, like Link's Awakening, just a remake of a, of a two D game, right? Um, mm. yeah. Fire Emblem Three Houses was cool, very good game. Um, but it's also not really it's not really an adventure game either, right? It's 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 real time yeah. strategy or something. It's not real time. It's turn based strategy. Based yeah um so is that uh astral chain absolutely fantastic fat, pretty good game right a little short pretty good no absolutely amazing. yeah you really loved it i liked it a lot it was a 10 out of 10 game. 9.5 yeah. out of 10 9 at least i'll nine. take it the nine it did have some flaws actually I, i'd probably give it nine i mean maybe that jumping like a, sometime that jump in was who nine as a high eight as a low nine i will give it no lower than a nine eight point five actually that final reminded me reminded me of some of the very frustrating jumping stuff 
Yeah. yeah. So that's why it's a nine, not a ten. That's, the only that's why it's an eight point five. No. Eight point five runs up to nine. <laughs> yeah. I love no. Don't get me wrong. I, I, Astral Chain was great. Yeah, but I mean, anyway, the point is like, so 2019 had a lot of like good games, but none of them were like masterful games. The closest thing was Fire Emblem Three Houses, and that had plenty of issues, graphically at least. <laughs> I mean, you don't even like the whole church element to it. Oh, no, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that you just it, said you hate I it. I don't. I don't like churchy religious people. Oh, so no, I was kind of like no, against no, the church. No, 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 I don't mean like that. I didn't mean like that. I meant more like um, you didn't like having to do all the monastery exploration stuff. Oh, yeah. I didn't mean like oh, because I, I no, talked I about like that, that before. Yeah, yeah. I talked about that before. I was like, I thought you were. Yeah, no. I was like, no, that's my... uh, anyways. Um, no, yeah. I, I think the game takes twenty trillion years to get going it's horrible um yeah. not the game it's horrible but the beginning of the game and the way that it takes mm -hmm. so long um i think i would really really like it if i continue to play it but it's just one of those things where i just have a hard time going back yeah but i know if i i know if i went back then i'd like it a lot probably i'd probably love the storyline but uh, i just don't i haven't, I haven't gotten back yeah um yeah i just think, think it's interesting um exchange here in the chat yeah actually jam is saying uh, this is for my Luigi's Mansion thing L jam is saying I got them all I don't think you can rise it back up He's in reference to the water being mm -hmm. raising back up so but you got all the gems okay cool so there is a way to get there's one gem that I'm missing that's like in that water tunnel area but it's dropped now it's where like there's like this big pipe with a hole in it you look through you can see like fish inside of it um, I know there's a gem around that area. Can't figure it out. Not yet. I think I got that one. I didn't. I'm too dumb. Ooh, JM saying a new Wii Sports. Dude, they, no, not a new Wii Sports. We need a new Wii Sports Resort. That's oh, Resort is lit, man. Yes. Yeah, Resort was Resort so was good. Lit. Exploring that island and the plane, just that finding all really the little cool. tokens. Yeah, oh. that was really fun. I enjoyed that. All game. the mini games were like perfect. They were all like Wii Sports, but they played better because they had the Wii Motion. Plus. I mean, I liked the sport, the sports in Wii Sports. They were good. Yeah. But imagine but the, the the but the resort one was better. Imagine resort, but with all the stuff. You know what? I would actually be really okay with a Wii Sports Resort HD. Yeah. Or like I, take it. I or reimagining of it like a Switch Sports Resort. That'd be cool, dude. Yeah. I like yeah, it a lot. Yeah. That was a fantastic game. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially it'd be better with the Joy Cons. You yeah. play better. The controls are better. Let's see here. But the checks of change I was referring to. Cold Outsider right now though said, Imagine if Nintendo made a Pokemon game instead of Game Freak. It would be such quality gold. Nintendo would make the Pokemon RPG we always dreamed about. Demo plays then responded, not in the time frame that Pokemon games get made in. Everyone's in agreement here. I mean, yeah, intent, you would have, we need a longer development cycle. Uh, I think if they had a longer development cycle, for sure, it could be great. But I'll say this. We're getting DLC now for Sword and Shield instead of an actual Pokemon game. And I think that's going to benefit development greatly. Um, that's going to, you know, it's a more efficient development process. I think this DLC is going to be a really nice expansion to Sword and Shield. And it's going to give them more time to focus on the next game when that does come out. So I'm... Actually, what I'm really hoping for, I know, no, this is, I'm crazy. Like, imagine if they just took a break the next year, right? And they then they came with a Pokemon game. That game was huge. I'm thinking what actually is going to happen is we're going to get a remake the next year, mm -hmm. right? And then after that, we're going to be talking about the next generation already. Um, but you know, maybe. Yeah. Although it'd be really neat if they started doing something different, where they have a game the next, then for the second year that the game is out, they have the DLC. Then they have a new game. Maybe it's like a remake or a remaster or some sort of like secondary game. And then the next year they have more DLC, but for that game they came out, right? So imagine we get Sinner remakes and then we get DLC for it, right? And then it's the next generation. Then we're just talking about like a four year cycle instead of a two year, instead of a three year cycle, giving them a little bit more time, but we're still getting content every single year. 
don't know, yeah. I think that'd be pretty good. But it's Game Freak, we'll see what happens. So, um, anyway, just going back to like sort of your predictions of Brandon. Any calls you're making. So you're thinking we get Mario Strikers this year. That's like your that's your that's the one thing that's a little different from everyone else that you're saying. Mario Strikers. Yeah, I think we could get Mario Strikers. I'd like um, I'm trying to think of what third parties. We, we, we know, see, I would, I would predict more different third parties, but we have so many ESRB ratings for, and stuff like that, that it just seems like it's going to be Catherine. It's going to be, um, uh, Bioshock. Bioshock, but there was another one. What was the other one? Was it like, um, it was an EA thing? Right? Was it EA? Was it like uh it was like an RP space RPG, Mass Effect? It wasn't Mass Effect, was it? I don't think it's Mass Effect. I want let me see if I can look up the original source for this. Um Bioshock Catherine. Is Catherine spelled with a C or there an C. E? Catherine Ratings. Korean rating boards reveals Bioshock, the collection, Catherine Full Body, and XCOM 2 collection heading to Switch. XCOM. That's what it was. XCOM. Wow. So yeah, those seem to be like I I don't see any more third parties beyond that. Like I don't know. Those would be pretty good to get on there. Yeah. So all those I think will be shown. For sure. They've been rated. We needed that. Uh Zimmer Chronicles 2. Or Zimmer Chronicles. Defender Edition. Edition. Uh, that's May. It's, unless it got delayed, yeah, that's May, I think. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that's a great year. Like, if we somehow get everything we're talking about, it's a fantastic year. Mm hmm Yeah. You gotta have Zelda. Like, if you don't have Zelda, every, my entire tune changes. Like, Zelda's gotta yeah. be, like... Oh, God. Zelda's the headliner. Like, Zelda's the LeBron James of this lineup. Okay? Like, it is the star you don't get you don't win the championships without your best player right you need your best player and the best player for mm. this year is 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 zelda mm. if zelda's Punch. injured or not ready to return this year they are not going to win the championship this year in other words if if nintendo really wants to hit it home they gotta get zelda um my opinion it's right yeah. <laughs> so um but yeah so you got zelda right hopefully right bayonetta 3 is a nice complimentary big game um maybe we get paper mario instead of mario kart uh that's i really want paper mario <laughs> like a good one yeah like a really good paper mario would just make me so happy that'd be nice yeah we got a decent rpg here right if we get paper mario we get um Zuni chronicles definitive edition we get uh barely default 2 yeah that's a pretty good lineup of RPGs. I would I would really like it if they ported Bravely Default and Bravely Second to the Switch. If they got HD versions of Because I've never played them. And then they got the Bravely Default 2 coming out. And I'm like, I don't know what this is. I've never played the originals, so I don't know. I'm not I don't want to play Bravely Default 2 if I haven't played the first one, but it's not available on the console that I own. So please do make it that way, Square Enix. Like, it doesn't even have to be, like, a super, super, like, remake. Just, like, HD. Just slap those assets in HD. I don't even care if it looks like garbage, upscaled 3DS game. I don't care. I just want to be able to play it. Wait, which you game? Know? Bravely Default. Oh, okay. You want to bring, you want to bring those over. Yeah, just okay. bring it over. Bravely Default and Bravely Second. You don't have to remake the whole game. Just make it playable. Well, like, on they, gotta, they have a map and stuff. Like, isn't that you got to kind of figure that, all that out and the touch controls and things like that? I don't know. Yeah, it's I kind of a lot for work. I think it's just a it's a turn-based RPG, so I feel like it shouldn't be. I understand what you mean, though. Having a sequel on there without the original being available. I, I like, I've it. never played the original, so I'd like to... I'd like them. They to might have the benefited from having a different name. I, I yeah, yeah. And I remember there were interviews before. Like, what if they did Braley Default, default next coming. instead of you know what I mean? Like, if they wanted to go with that whole idea of like it being something beyond, right? The first one, 
Bravely Default next, right? Because then you have Bravely Default second, Bravely Default next. That's different than Bravely Default 2. Yeah. Bravely I default... believe it's it's Bravely Default, Bravely second, so the defaults just dropped completely. Oh, okay. And then Bravely Default 2. Okay, well, by giving keeping it the default, it's still implying a sequel. Yeah. But if you Bravely call... second, I don't think is a direct sequel. I think it's like a prequel or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think it's a sequel. Like, Bravely Default 2 is going to be. I understand. Oh, I'll be yawning. That means the the podcast is over. <laughs> JM saying Zelda is more like Kawhi. Oh, I don't know. Um, I, I from the perspective of oh, you should expect delays, and they're always missing games. Zelda only comes occasionally. See that, but I don't know if I agree that Kawhi should be. I mean, either way, you get the point. You need your superstar, right? You you need your your MVP level player to be there and ready for the championships uh so yeah cold outside right now though. i just need to see breath of the wild at e3 i won't care if it's delayed to the spring i just got to see it i mean uh, i'll give you like i think 100 percent we're gonna see it at e3 no matter what you think so yeah 100 yeah, well I, I think yeah we'll for sure see it this year yeah Duo plays this thing. I will say that Animal Crossing New Horizons Online is actually much better than it needs to be. Very one to one. I haven't played online yet. I haven't played either. We should all like get in each other's towns and, and play together. Yeah. Make best. We should be best friends. So I can cut down all your trees. Oh, how dare. Oh, you funny can actually story. do that. Like you make someone funny your best story. friend, they can ruin your island, right? Yeah, yeah. Funny story. Um, you you know you guys know Pedro. He hasn't been on yeah. here in a while, but. You guys know him. Been friends for a long time. I had never played Animal Crossing before. And I didn't really know how it worked. And he let me go to his island to fish. And I'm like, oh, it's an a island. It's separate from your main town. It, it, this stuff will just regenerate if I chop it down. What game were you? Which one was this? New Leaf. Okay. So I just chopped down all the trees on this island. <laughs> and he... They don't regenerate. Um, I thought they did because it's not in the main town. <laughs> and so, yeah, I ruined the island for him. I think he just ended up like replanting them or they grew back. I don't know. Dug it took a while to fix. Back. Yeah. Um, that was a thing that happened. I guess that's the thing though, right? Like everything at Owl Crossing, like it can be ruined, but it could also be fixed. Like there's nothing that's permanent necessarily. No, no, it can just be really hard to fix. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we've reached the the end of this discussion, guys. Um, we are hoping for some great stuff uh, for this supposed direct that is unconfirmed. So take it with a grain of salt, of course. Uh, another thing to take into consideration, given the whole health concern with COVID nineteen, maybe we should be careful um with our expectations that could be leading to some delays i think this march direct is gonna be very telling for what to expect for the rest of the year they're going to outline what's to come for the rest of the year and it's important um we're gonna find out probably this week or else yeah. the investors are gonna be pissed but we're all uh, gonna be pissed we're all gonna be pissed <laughs> if there's nothing happening um but yeah it, it's gonna be crazy i do see that doing plays added me so I'll, I'll get to that before we call it a night but Duma added me. I was playing online beside my daughter today, and it was very accurate. I was expecting lag. So I, that's in reference to earlier where you were saying it was one to one. That's interesting. Yeah. So I definitely want to give a shot. Maybe Brandon and I will play Animal Crossing later. Or should we? St if I get shut down uh, at work, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll, definitely, I'll definitely stream if I get shut down. So there might be more streaming. I don't know if it'll work. Apparently, YouTube broke their notifications. Like we had like a third of the people watching. <laughs> this time yeah i couldn't even get yeah. into my sub box <laughs> yeah i'm curious to see if it's there right now yeah like, go to youtube i go my subscriptions it's not <laughs> right so on that note guys please make sure to share the video and leave a like also make sure to check out brandon's channel kazoo almost came this week she might be on here next week uh, a couple other people may be on here next week if it's like uh if we have the the, the direct next week maybe we'll try to get multiple guests on right mm -hmm. make it like a big discussion because we've yeah. been we've been on nintendo news drought right and so it was gonna starved. be it's gonna, could be a lot to talk about so get ready guys stay excited stuff is coming um and it's it's gonna be good 
All right. Take care, y'all. Oh, God, why did I say that? Take care, y'all. I'm from Texas. Are you? I'm from You're Texas. From I don't yeah. even say y'all. Y'all. Everybody that's, that's what I said. I'm, there's something wrong with me. I don't know what it is, yeah. but it's very terrible. I know. I, I don't even know how to end the stream. Where is it? The end stream? Oh, there we are. Yeah. Anyways, guys. Yeah. Take care. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Bye.